Have you been in an accident that wasn't your fault? Feeling overwhelmed and unsure what to do next? Look no further. The personal injury attorneys at Phillips Law Firm are here to help. Phillips Law Firm understands that accidents can turn your life upside down. That's why they're dedicated to fighting for the compensation you deserve and to making the process as stress-free as possible. Don't wait any longer. Call now, 1-800-JUSTICE, or visit justiceforyou.com. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith. Thanks for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Want more? Check out the greatest podcast in all the land, the podcast. Be sure to subscribe and listen to a brand new episode every Tuesday night. Unfortunately, what you're about to hear is real. The members of this radio program are simply not that bright. Or what some people would call educated. They are merely stupid. They're not trying to offend anyone on purpose. And all have played doctors on TV. You have been warned and are cordially invited to join the party. This is the men's room. Forget it, man, and get with the countdown. Get, 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 get with the countdown. Shake this square world and blast off the kicks, Bill. Kicks. <laughs> The trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a kite. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. You know what they say, shake your radio more than three times and you're playing with it. You're listening to the men's room. Wow! It's all out. And away we go. Welcome to Season 18, Episode Number 3,929. Along with Steve the Throw Hill, The Ted Smith, Woo! and Mike Hawk. Come on! Montgomery! And you, Hardeman's Row. On tap today, once again, we play Big Dummy. Oh, look. Seattle supersonic legend Sean Kemp joins us in studio. We will play Profile This, plus headlines, a men's room shout of the day, fun listener emails, and everyone's favorite, TV time with Ted. Click, clack, drink, and he drunk. All right, here we go. Seattle drug dealer was doing well for himself until he passed down in his car. Meanwhile, a man gets an Airbnb in England and learns how to not live like a rock star. Las Vegas man is busted driving drunk with firearms and fireworks in his trunk. Iowa man lying in the middle of an intersection of a highway? Yeah, very drunk. An investigation is launched after thieves steal the runway lights at an airport. That is all coming on today's very special episode of The Men's Room. And now, here's the question. Hola, bitches. Good day to you and yours. All right, today is the day that we play Big Dummy. The game show that rewards you for your stunning ignorance. And here's how it works. You call us, we will spin the category. I thought we were doing well on timing today. It was a little early, but it happens to a lot of wheel spinners. I see what you did there. We will spin the category wheel, and then we'll ask you a question from that category. (laughs) But here's where Big Dummy separates itself from your average, more reputable game show. We will continue to ask you questions until you get one right. Because, as always, we want you to leave here smarter than you showed up. Now, so far this big year, our uh, our current winner has been the lovely and talented Kyle, who thought that a man witch was a warlock and found a way to answer 14 consecutive questions wrong. Can you do better? Of course you can. Everyone else has. So give us a call, and off we go on Big Dummy. To be a contestant to play Big Dummy, call 206-803-ROCK. Like The Men's Room on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Men's Room Live, and send your emails to the men's room at KISW.com. Nueva marca Break Best Select Pro de O'Reilly Auto Parts eleva el estándar de las balatas y discos de freno para vehículos nacionales. Para fórmulas de fricción específicas para cada vehículo, cuñas antirruido Quitec y herrajes de acero inoxidable, elige Break Best Select Pro de venta exclusiva en tu tienda O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 O'Reilly Auto Parts. The debauchery rolls on. You're listening to The Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Oh, the us away we go. Welcome to Season 18, Episode number 3,929. What a large and a charge program we have for you today. 
Oh, yeah. Guaranteed future repeat. Oh, I got to text my wife real quick. What's that? Guaranteed future repeat? No, I'm relaying the news that Ted just told me. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I want to remember this right yeah. now. Head uh, chef uh, taking a week off. The restaurant's closed this week. I am. We have we have we have uh, water damage. Yo, oh. fire in the kitchen. Actually, yes. Health inspector. Like, no, the health department. No. Clearly, you've paid them off. The, <laughs> the health department's fine. Uh, somebody, I'm not going to say who. So, yeah, they started a fire because they didn't clean the damn grease trap. Aha! Uh-huh. Always the grease trap. It's always, always grease the grease trap. trap. It is. Always yeah, especially when you're dealing with insects, their shells, and little little. Little exoskeletons. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. In there. When you deal with vermin and insects. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so uh, the head chef's taking a, a day off. So who do we have uh, in his place today? The one and only Sean Kemp, Seattle supersonic legend. Legend. Joining us in studio. I want to say that uh, in all our years that we've been doing this show, both here and uh, in Baltimore, Maryland, and even when we were on the buzz here late at night in uh, Seattle, we have never had an NBA player. On this program, before. yes, we oh, have. have. Yes, we, have. we have. Oh, I in remember Baltimore, this one because it was awful. He hated us, Steve Francis. Oh, that's right. God, that was we did terrible. not have him in studio. Not we in did studio. Not. We had him on the phone. You're absolutely My right. God. I that, remember that, that doesn't one. count. It does. No, it does not. Because he hated. It. Yeah, no, Mike, it, does it was so bad. That's why Thrill and I are like, oh, we've had an NBA. I forget on. almost every interview we've done. Yes. I remember right. this one because this guy hated, but not a legend like Sean Kemp. I mean, come on. There's no no. Steve Francis was a good baller. He was a good baller. Yeah, he's not Sean Kemp. He's not Sean Kemp. But no, at the no, time really we were talking to him, he was, he mattered. He was yeah. he was relevant. Yeah, and, and he, he hated us. Is that in your pile of CDs on your desk over there? It might, man. Honest to God, no. Hey, what do you that, like, was, that was not a key. Like Vince Neal <laughs> did not like us, but it was still funny because sure. Vince Neal's such a tool, right? Yeah. Well, Steve it, Francis yeah. wasn't even like funny. Mm-hmm. It just sucked. Yeah. Now we've had NFL players on before, sure. So that 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 that's 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 one we checked off. Yeah, we've had Major League Baseball players yeah. on before. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've had yeah, we've had boxers on. We've had MMA guys on. We've had bull riders on. Don't believe we've ever had a hockey player. Uh, Never a hockey. We've had uh, soccer. Steve you, Miggs. We've had Miggs yeah, 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 on. Yeah, yeah, All yeah, right. Yeah, yeah but not professional. Pro, pro level. Yeah, yeah pro right. level. Okay. Well, if you're gonna be ticky tacky, then we haven't. Because uh, I think our only pro baseball player. Now we've had Edgar Martinez on. Correct. Jay? Yeah, we've, we've had, had the bone on. on. We've had the bone on. Yeah. <laughs> we had Billy Ripken Jr. Or Billy Ripken Is he on. a baseball player? Yes. Or he, play, he played a he few played seasons. He played for the Orioles? <laughs> Again. But it's Billy Ripken, man. Right. You're, not in, you're not talking about <laughs> You're talking about boobs. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> or boobs. Either one. Right. Yeah, exactly. I don't he, think he said anything about baseball in the entire interview. I'm not even kidding. Yeah, you're right. I don't know that we've had a current Mariner on. No. I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, Mike. I should get on. Yeah. Uh, Sean Kim, by the way, 6'10". We're going to ask him how many times he's hit his head on something. And everyone says they hate those questions. Yeah, we don't care. Oh, yeah. And and he's 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 6'10". He's 6'10". Yeah, six ten. I mean, what was your he, question? Have you ever flown coach? coach. <laughs> Have you ever had to sit in the middle? When's the last time you slept in a bunk bed? Right. I mean, I just feel like, even if Sean Kemp doesn't ever, like, I'm just like, if he's like, do you mind if I get the aisle? Like, no, go ahead, dude. Yeah, that would be me. Right. But he is uh, hosting the uh, Cantana Fest down in uh, in Renton, uh, hosted by our sister station, Hot 1037. Right. So we're nice. going to talk to Sean Kemp about uh, all, that he's got, for that. all that he's got going on in his, his world there, including uh, uh, Sean Kemp's cannabis. And I think Gary's got his own uh, strain of uh, weed called uh, Gary's, well, Gary's Kemp, Hayden's Cookies or something like and that. Sean no, Kemp, I mean, there. it's... Forget just the basketball part. I mean, he's just a Seattle institution. He is, man. Yeah. You know? Murals are up in town and everything else. It's Yeah, I know for a while he had a bar. I used to go in there. I knew one of the bartenders. Like, it was awesome. I want to ask him, how weird is it, right? You live in a city. You do your thing. But, like, you're driving down the street. There is a mural of you. You know, like, right, yeah. do you get used to that? Or is right. it always like, have you got damn? And, and trust me. He is two years away from him being brought back into the limelight of everything else. When, you know, I know when for NBA a fact, returns, I know for yeah, a fact, it's back. Vegas and it's going to be us. So when that happens, man, he's going to be the spokesperson for the most part uh, for the uh, for the supersonic. So that is something to be excited about. And uh, we're excited to have uh, 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 Sean Kim come on the uh, come on the program. I'm going to tell him you're cool than yeah. Steve Francis. <laughs> Who's Steve Francis? Right, exactly. Who? He was on the Olympic team, wasn't he, Kemp? I haven't done all that research yet. I think I think at one point in time he was. I mean, hell, he was 
he was an all star uh, all right. for, yeah, I don't for know. so many years. I mean, hell, he's probably had a ton of experience uh, as far as all kinds of crazy stuff. What else do we have for you today? As we do every Monday through Friday, we head on over exclusively to the Odyssey app for the Men's Room Happy Hour. All things Men's Room on the Men's Room page on the Odyssey app. Do yourself a favor. Sign in when you get there. You have a chance to win uh, tickets every t- every hour that you listen. You get a different entry. We've got those Greta Van Fleet tickets and a backstage tour and an autographed guitar and all that. So if you're listening to the show and you listen to four hours, uh, that's four different entries for your chance to win those tickets. On Odyssey. Now, uh, also on Odyssey. I don't think they designed that yeah. to be comedic, but I find it hilarious. So sign in for sure when you get there. When you get to the Odyssey app, look for the Men's Room page. That's where you're going to find all things Men's Room, including the Men's Room Happy Hour channel, the Men's Room radio station that we uh, curated. All of our podcasts are on there as well. And as we do on uh, Thursdays when we play Big Dummy, we do a little Dirty Big Dummy. And once again today for you, we have a brand new category yeah. as far as Dirty Big Dummy is concerned. And this one is real wedding and engagement announcements that have been made throughout the years. Now, you might so know the two last names. names. Yeah, exactly. It's always the last names. Like uh, John Wacker and Kate Bush. Yeah, you, you can know, put the Wacker you, Bush. You can, you, can, <laughs> you can put those in order. Or it, Bush Wacker. Which Wacker. one's worse? Look, look. Wacker Bush or Bush Wacker? Mm-hmm. Oh, man. If you had to hyphenate right. your name and they said you get to pick the order, Mike. It's got to be, are you going Bushwhacker or Wacker Bush? I'm going Bushwhacker. Bush okay, all right. Well, for an example, okay, I'll give you a couple examples here, the ones that I can read. So three of these are actual announcements. All right. They're actual wedding combination names. Uh, so you got Wang Holder. Wang Holder, okay. It could be Holder Wang, which is not much better, but either it way. It really doesn't matter. Wang Holder, uh, is that uh, an actual uh, wedding combination name? A long wee-wee. <laughs> <laughs> or we be long. I hope that's real. Yeah. <laughs> More bacon. Did those two get married? <laughs> More and bacon. Ah, uh, what else? Uh, the, the filler and quick. Filler quick. Filler quick. Filler All quick. Right. Uh, so it's uh, wedding announcements and engagement announcements coming up yeah. on Dirty Big Dummy. Uh, three are actual, real weddings and engagements that happen. Uh, one is made up. So hopefully you can join us for a little Men's Room Happy Hour and Dirty Big Dummy coming up. And today is the day that we play the game known as Big Dummy. It's an easy game to play. We spin the category wheel. You're either playing for Team Sober or Team Not Sober. Spin in it. Yeah, our biggest dummy so far, Kyle, took him 14 questions to get one right. When we, uh, when we do play Big Dummy, we like to do a little Men's Room poll. Find out where your head is. Uh, last time we asked you, you could only eat one on the grill for the summer. So the choice is ribs, steak, uh, the traditional dogs and burgers and chicken. And believe it or not, the uh, as far as the poll goes, this one was, was fairly close. I can believe that. Uh, coming in at number four, 17% of you in last place said, if I could eat one thing on the grill this summer, it would be chicken. And chicken was actually my pick. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a grilled chicken guy. It is good, but, you know, chicken, it's versatile enough that... I gotta go with the other ones. Squeaking by chicken and number three was ribs at eighteen percent. Ribs. So only one percent more than chicken. Steak came in at number two at thirty-two percent. Dogs and burgers squeaked by steak with thirty-three percent of the vote. So as far as that is concerned, that was uh, probably right, that's uh, the one. Pretty tight race there in the in the poll. Now on uh, this week's uh, men's room poll, you're never going to do one of these again. So we've got four choices. The first one being live sports. And we mean live sports. We mean you're watching a game on television. Mm -hmm. You are going to a game. All the sports live. You cannot watch them. You know what, man? We'll give you a pass. If you want to tape your team and watch it when you get home. You can tape it. But it's not going to be live. And let's face it. you can't get. feels different. You can't get on your phone. If it's your team, you will find out what the score is, who's playing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I think I would cease to exist if I couldn't do that. Like Miles said, man, it's not even that you just can't watch it. It's that don't go on your phone, do not go online, basically read a book. Yeah. Read a book until right. you can watch it. I mean, sports is my number one thing. It, 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 I watch sports religiously, if I can. Like last night, I couldn't watch the Sounders because I don't have Apple TV. Mm-hmm. But I did watch USA and Panama. That's a, a while, shame. Until the shootout. Yeah, that was... that was, that was, that was, that was like, they, Panama family. was happy, weren't they? Yeah. Man, they were celebrating. They were, I don't think they stopped partying. No. <laughs> Probably not. And throw you correct. Sounders was not yeah, better. Seriously, it mm-hmm. didn't matter which one you okay. watched. Okay, all right. So live sports, number one. Number two is concerts. You can never go to a concert again. No live music at all in any capacity. All right? You can listen to music. 
You can listen to a live show from a band you like that puts out an album. You just can't go to any concerts anymore. Now, the older I get, the more important it is. Because the older you get, the more likely that the people you like, they got one or two more tours. Sure. When you, when you look at just like Climate Pledge and see, I, I saw that uh, Rod Stewart is coming around. There's a number of guys that I just have not seen live that I think, you know what, man? That 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 would be... You it. didn't care when you were growing up, and now that you're older, you're like, maybe I should go see I'm, this. Rod Stewart's probably getting pretty close to 80 years old. I mean, he doesn't look it, but he, he, he's, he getting, he's getting up there. You know what I'm For saying? For sure. So those type of acts. It's like Eldon John just uh, did his final farewell uh, tour. I show. could not pay that money. Last week, but I, I, so I saw, I saw him a few years ago in Vegas, but, right. I, but the reason I went was because I'd never seen him live. Correct. And I was happy that I went to that show because, you know, it's hit after hit after hit. And it's Elton John. He puts on a good show. So that, 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 that's the kind of place where I'm at right now as far as concerts go. If I have not seen the band, I want to go and see them if I grew up with Yeah, them. I'm right there with it. So concerts is Concert, number two. Concerts Could, are just awesome, too. Like I said, like I'm going to sound old. I didn't know who this rapper was. I saw him Saturday do two songs before the celebrity softball game. And I was just like, that just looks awesome. Right. Mm-hmm. There's like pyro and stuff. Like, there's bands I've seen that I don't like. But it just, the show, the show was, great. was great. Yeah. What if everyone tell me about Taylor Swift? I'm like, I have no urge to see her. Everyone's, like, dude, she puts on a great show. I'm like, I, she's a professional entertainer. I completely believe she puts on a great show. She just has to play someone else's music. I don't right. want to, yeah. it's not that I don't want to see her. I don't want to hear her music. But so I've seen some artists I really like, and their live show sucks. Uh, I've had that a few times. And that's the most. I feel a lot better when it's a band where I'm like, I don't care about this band. And then they put on a spectacular show, and then you're kind of rooting for them, as opposed to this artist I've always liked. You're like, this was a dud. Hell, I want to like, see Lionel Richie. I was like, yeah, I want to see Lionel Richie. It wasn't like, I got there and I was like, man, this guy, I cannot believe how good of a show it was. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it was way beyond my expectation of life. Yeah, like, I'm mad I'll never see Phil Collins. No, you won't. He is, uh, he, yeah, he's done. Yeah, he's kind of falling apart, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know with the Genesis tour, he sat in a chair for the entire show, which, you know, Hell, Willie Nelson on his last big, you know, birthday celebration concert but thing. He, he sat, like, but it's Willie Nelson, so like I feel like he should be able like to sit Genesis, down. It doesn't matter if he's sitting in a chair. You know what I mean? Like I, when you see old footage of some of his shows, it, it blew me away. Really? I recently looked up just some like Phil Collins. Was he I, active on? Oh my god, it's unreal. He's like taking Never. stuff up through the floor. Like yeah, like I I see like I know more while I make fun of Phil Collins. Yep. I want to what see about his forehead. That's open game. I've done. Steve, I've never seen Kiss. You've never seen Kiss? I've never seen Kiss. Hell, I've seen Kiss. So we come to uh, Climate Pledge? I've seen it like five or six times. That's a a show I definitely have to go see. I saw them do an acoustic set in a bar one time, but that was not it. Come on. That doesn't really count. So concerts is uh, You saw Kiss do an acoustic set without makeup? Yeah. Damn. That's not seeing Kiss. Right, well, no, but, I mean, it, but it's still you cool. saw the as no, a it Kiss is. fan. It's real cool because I'm in a bar with a hundred right. people. Sure. Kiss is up on stage and they're playing. <laughs> they're not I'm known right for I'm their right music and singing ability. No, but that's, that's why it made fine. it cool. Exactly. Like, I, I mean, that, you're not. Made for love yeah. and <laughs> right. Here's hard luck woman again. The acoustic version. <laughs> It was cool. I'm five feet away from freaking Kiss. You know? There's no pyro. There's no lit up sign in the back. But you just, need to have the full, immersive, absolutely ridiculous, over the top, unnecessary and experience. I will say that this. is a Kiss concert. Well, that's why you started with I've never seen Kiss. I've You've never seen, seen them, them perform an acoustic. They, set, and they right? did maybe four songs. Yeah. Oh God. Come and I, on. I did get a chance to interview Gene and Paul at the end of that, and they were the nicest guys in the world. Sure. We? Both of them were incredible. The brother, yeah, we're rich. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to remember who the guitarist was at that time. Might have been Kulik. Yeah, it might have been Bruce Kulik. What year was it? It was the year that they released Kiss Alive Three. Bruce Kulik. It was Kulik. Yes. Okay, because I remember yeah, Singer was uh, still the he he just got there as yes. the, uh, as the drummer. Okay, so concerts is number two. Number three is movies. You will never watch a movie in the theater at your home on an airplane. You will never watch another movie for the rest of your no life. rom coms on the airplane, Ted. Nothing. So I was fine with not going to the movie theater, but right when Miles mentioned like, "Oh, not at home either," I was like, "Oh crap!" Right, because what? It's about fifty fifty now. As far as ooh, this movie's coming out, can't wait to see it. Want to go to the theater? I will wait a month. I wait yeah, a month to watch yeah, it at home. Yeah, it just depends on your passion for wh- whatever the movie is. And, and also, if it's some big time superhero blockbuster, just go to the movies so you can see all the explosions. Yeah. If it's something my wife wants to see, like, but you gotta wait for that for on demand. It's like the new. If Indiana there are films. no special effects, which if my wife likes the movie, there's no special effects unless they CGI the tears streaming down someone's now, face. Now, Mission Impossible would be a great movie to go see the movie. That'd be cool. Yeah, I don't think that Indiana Jones would be. I heard that movie sucked. I would watch that at home. Yeah. Based on the ones that I've seen that have been... Because now it's really just nostalgic. Lately. 
Like, yeah, I have to yeah, watch it yeah. to complete the cycle. Now, if you're a Marvel fan, that would be a tough one as far as movies sure. go. But, uh, yeah, you know, my thing is, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a Star Wars guy. And as long as uh, Disney Plus keeps putting out these shows, I can survive on the shows without having to watch... Shows are doing me just fine. ...the new Star Wars movie. So right. I, could, I, could, I, I could live off that. And your fourth uh, choice here, that would be simply never do again, Vegas. You're never going to Vegas again. For whatever reason, you are never... Maybe it's one of your favorite bands, and they are doing a... Residency. Uh, residency, and that's going to be it. You know, they'll never play again, probably. So I can see a lot of these guys who have gone on tour and say they'll never tour again. That doesn't, doesn't mean, mean we won't they'll, perform they'll, live. They'll, they'll right. never residency again. So, you know, that, that that's one aspect. Also, you got to think to yourself that uh, at some point in time, Vegas is going to get a Super Bowl. Uh, Vegas is inevitably. Uh, you know, you, you, one of your teams is going to play in Vegas. It's a great. It weekend. might just be a work conference. Yeah, I mean, hell, if the Seahawks are yep. in Vegas. You're telling me that that place is going to be filled with as many Seahawks fans as oh, possible yeah. with a two and a half hour flight to Vegas or three hours, whatever. Like I'm going to Vegas in November for that F1 race. But if it wasn't for that, like I'd be fine, never going again. That's what I'm saying to Miles. I'm, look, because when I go to Vegas, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going there for your show. I'm not going there to gamble. I'm going there to get really drunk and do tons of drugs. Mm -hmm. Straight up, that is my motivation yeah. to go to Vegas. But then it occurred to me, I can get drunk and do drugs anywhere. I can gamble with Am Amish folks in the middle of Pennsylvania and do that. I'm you, cool. Yeah, if you, if, you, if you had a map of all the places where you just felt like ass in your life, where you've been someplace... And After you're done? Yeah. The terminal, uh, where Alaska Airlines is... The gate is all the way at the end of the walkway in Vegas. It is the sad walk of shame where you pass the Burger King, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you pass the one bar, you pass the little gambling smoking area. I don't know that I pass but Burger it, King because I probably have something I need based on the fact that I'm leaving. But let, let me get a quick bite to eat. Oh, my God, man. There's no there's no walk in America <laughs> that, that I have felt worse at consistently than to walk into that airport to come back home. Vegas is a guarantee. Also Miami, if you go there. Because you treat Miami kind of like Vegas. There's yeah. not a lot of gambling, but the drugs are the same. The booze is the same. In right. and, and, and a close second, Portland. Uh, I can really hurt myself in yeah. Portland for some reason. Because there's nothing else to do. I mean, Portland, like, that, look, man. That, 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 I don't mean to be drunk me. in the middle of the street, but there's not a lot to do here. So I got drunk. Yeah. And now I'm in the middle of the street. <laughs> there is other stuff to do. There is, right. but I don't want to hear it. I just know that between Portland and Vegas, man, I, I know I'm going to come home, and I, I, I'm i not going to feel right for a day or two. Yeah, yeah it's usually a two-day. It's normally just, I'm completely dehydrated. There, there's so many elements to this level. That's why I'm not giving it up. That's like our number one vacation. We love going to Vegas. Right? No, there's, oh, oh nice. Keep on going to Vegas. Yeah. Hey, look, the last time I went there, I, I've seen Bruno Mars there two or three times. Oh, I, yeah. That's where I saw Lionel Richie. That's where I saw Elton John. There's one thing about Vegas. If you go there at the right time, you don't need to go to show shows like Circus Soleil or any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. You go to concerts, man. Yeah. You see really good good bands yeah. and stuff like that. So Vegas is number four. So our men's room poll, you're never going to do one again. Live sports, concerts, movies, or Vegas. And if you happen to follow us on Twitter, the poll is uh, up now at uh, Men's Room Live. We'll take a break. Come back with Big Dummy next. 99.9 .9 KISW. The shenanigans continue. This is the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. All right, let's do this. The game is Big Dummy, 206-803-ROCK. Steve, who is our first contestant, ready to play the big game. Hello, Marshall. Welcome to the Men's Room. Hey, how you doing? Hola. Marshall, team sober, team not sober today. Uh, not sober today. I'm home today. Oh, good for you. Crown Royal? Oh. Yeah, Crown Royal today, yeah. I won't ask uh, if you mix it with anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Marshall, have you ever tried the uh, the Crown Royal XR that has the uh, the red uh, the red label on it? Uh, no, I haven't. No. If you ever see it, I know it's going to be a little bit pricey. Buy that. Is it that good? Oh my God! It have is. I tried it as far as yes, you, know? you have? Okay. Yes. And you had this look like, hey, you should know this. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> it's I hear it's good, stuff. Marshall, and apparently I drank it. Great. All right, Marshall, I never do again. Is it uh, live sports, concerts, movies, or Vegas? Concerts. Concerts. Okay. What's the last concert you went to, Marshall? Uh, I, was, I went to Thunder Roses in 88 with my dad at the Forum, Old Forum in L.A. Oh, damn. It's been a while. Yeah. That's a hot yeah, man. That's a lot. <laughs> okay. No wonder. That's, that's the only concert, only concert I've been to. That's Wait, the only who one? was it? Guns N' Roses, not yeah. the Forum in L.A. Oh, all right. That is bad. That's the only guy. Is there anyone who you want to see? Oh, Stevie come around. I might have to change it. I got to see Stevie. You know, it's funny. He won't see you, but I understand. I saw him. I saw him do uh, hey, songs in the key of life. I don't think that's true. I don't think that's true. I think Stevie can see. I, I you think that. Stevie can see? He caught that microphone. You, you, you listen to his records. 
I don't know. He's writing the walls and stuff. I don't know what you're talking about there, Stevie. Do you think that's his big reveal at the end of all this? Like, I've been able to see your asses the whole time. Exactly. Yeah, I, I, I think Stevie can see. Okay. Right. <laughs> Who opened up for Guns N' Roses? Was that, was that uh, in Liv- uh, Living Color? No, but oh, I did. Uh, I remember my brother used to talk about them like in the early 80s and the black rock band was rocking out. But, uh, I think it was Poison. I was uh, Poison. Okay. Ooh. So half the show was good. Yeah, okay. I saw that tour. but. Uh, Mm-hmm. I just hear the name poison. I get angry. Yeah, All right, it wasn't poison. It wasn't poison. Okay, was well, not poison. Yeah. All right, here's your question. The book "The Lord of the Flies" takes place during what war? Uh, is that World War Two? Jesus Christ! I mean, it's just, <laughs> wow. All right, no way. You can't get him. I know it's you impossible. Can't, you can't get it. It is impossible. All right, we have our uh, true or false 50-50 question. D. Ted Smith has been working diligently all week. This week, look, so you've done Star Wars, you've done Star Trek, you've done Harry Potter. Last week, you did the planets. This week, Ted brings just us... Just Uranus. Just, that's right, it's just Uranus. Just Uranus, that is correct. Uh, he brings us superheroes. All right. It can be Marshall, uh, I'm sorry, it can be Marvel, it can be DC, it doesn't matter. Just superheroes. Marshall, here's your question. True or false? Ant-Man can be easily dispatched with Raid. <laughs> I'll say true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Him. I don't know space, why that goes space, space, space nerd. Stuff. Yeah, man. Just pull out a can of Raid, Ant Man goes away. Gave us Big Dummy 206 803 Rock. Ant Man to me was ruined by the boys. Oh, uh, well, I haven't got to that point. Is it season three? three? It's the opening scene of season three. All right. There is a character that essentially mimics what Ant Man can do. Is Ant Man Paul Rudd? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay. Yes. The other guy who doesn't age. Hello, Patty. Welcome to the men's room. Hola! Oh, Patty, are you sober or not sober? Uh, not. <laughs> not sober, Patty. What are you doing over there, Patty? That's right. What do you got going okay. on? So what are you doing? Uh, just uh, sitting in a parking lot waiting to get on. <laughs> you're So you're not sober and you're sitting in a parking lot. I like the sound of it. Yeah. All right, Patty. That's class. <laughs> okay, never do again. Live sports, concerts, movies, or Vegas? Concerts. Concerts? Who All was right. the last concert? Stevie Stone. Stevie Stone? Stevie Stone. I don't know if I know who that is. I have no idea who that is. Is that he kind works of... with Tech Nine? Oh, all right. Tech all right. Nine. Okay. Tech Nine coming to town soon, by the way. Yes. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. That's what, that's what Sean and Scott are coming in to talk about. Right? Yeah. We have Sean Kim coming in around 4.30 today, a little bit later on the show, but he'll be with Tech Nine, Red Man, a few others mm-hmm. for their, their big festival. And everyone My says son's I... a DJing at the Tech Nine concert. Really? Oh, that's nice. very cool. You, yeah. So are you going? Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. And now you're giving up concerts. <laughs> you're giving up concerts, even though your son's going to DJ one. That, that, why, that. Don't, why don't you, uh, you know, go out and support your son anymore? Yeah, what's, what's up with that? <laughs> Come on, Patty. Right, right. <laughs> By the way, somebody here says, <laughs> ask Marshall. I can't. Says, ask Marshall the hardest question you have. Ten bucks says he nails it. I, I completely oh, agree. Go oh, ahead. Yeah. No, no. How many grains of sand are on the bottom of the Atlantic Ocean? Oh, summer or winter. All right. Here is your question. The assassination of what country's Archduke led to World War I? I don't even get multiple choice. <laughs> no, I mean, it's kind of a famous thing. Yeah, I mean, it started World War I. I have no clue. Is, of, name a country. Uh, World War II. World War I. Just, World name, War I. just name a country in Europe. Uh, name a country in Europe. Oh, my God. I'm with an 11-year-old. He doesn't even know. A country Whoa, in Europe? You? Oh, you, you, a country in Europe. Just name one. Italy. Ooh, oh, it was, was not Italy. Italy. So it's Archduke Ferdinand. Yeah. Come on, Ted. France? No. Portugal? No. Germany? <laughs> no. Close. You're getting closer with Germany. Austria. Austria. That is correct. Uh-huh. I was going to say that. Sure you were. Sure, I, I sure, <laughs> sure. We all were. We all were. All right, Patty, <laughs> now you have a multiple choice question. Five, okay, eight, good. five, eight, eleven, or fifteen. How many states legally forbid happy hours? Ooh. Fifteen. Oh, uh, hold on, let me count. <laughs> you did right. I didn't write down the damn number. I just wrote down the states. Uh it is eight. Eight. It's Alaska, <gasps> Indiana, Massachusetts, North Carolina, Oklahoma, Rhode Island, Utah, and Vermont. What is the what is the thought process? I understand a time when you would close right. a bar, but what what is the, what is the deal with happy hour being a problem? I don't know. Or blue laws, I, I get based on religion, but but I would imagine that's a, like don't discount out. You know, alcohol is already an agent of Satan. Do not give okay. people. Right. It's it, just it's just to discourage binge drinking. It says. 
hey, those states, it doesn't mm-hmm. discourage They just do it at home. Right. right. It just means it costs me more money, but it's fine. All right, your question. Who wrote the novel The Green Mile? Ah. It is te- uh, Mike's favorite author. I know. I read that. Your kid read I, it. I don't know. How many kids do you have, Patty? Just one here. All right. We and got one DJ. Just one there. one there. And that kid said he read The Green Mile, but he cannot remember who right. wrote it. Right. His name's Clayton. Going to put that out there. I thought I your favorite read. novel was uh, 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 Stephen King. It is Correct. Stephen King. And he wrote The Green Mile? He wrote The Green yeah. Mile. I did not know that. Yeah. yeah. Huh. I thought he, he just did horror movies. He just doesn't do scary stuff. I didn't yeah. know that. He reaches out, man. Yeah. I'll be damned. It's like Spielberg. Never he also, aliens. he wrote Shawshank. Correct. Correct. Hmm. Which has parts that are terrifying. Yeah, I was going to say. Much different kind of horror story. Question four, Patty. Well, it's not like the Green Mile is okay. uplifting. You know, you're right. That was <laughs> how we get you. <laughs> yeah, I didn't see that coming in the Green Mile. I'm like, oh, God damn it. I have a lot of happy stories there with Mr. King. It's another note of a movie I won't watch again. Great movie. Won't yeah. watch it again. I don't know. Rip your insides out. All right, Patty. I feel like you will know the answer to this. Let's hope. What ingredient turns a martini into a dirty martini? Uh, olive juice. Oh, I uh-huh. that, that's, come on. Hey, Somehow hey. we do. Very good, very good. <laughs> Game is big, dummy. 206 803 right. I just struggle to name a country in Europe. A country. Just right, like, a, any what makes, country. What makes it a dirty martini? I'll juice. I'll juice. Come on now, give me a heart. What did you expect? <laughs> Hello, Steve. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 Steve, you on Team Sober or Team Not Sober? Sober. Sober. Steve, welcome to Big Dummy. Okay, our men's room poll. What will you never do again? Live sports, concerts, movies, or Vegas? Uh, let's do Vegas. Vegas. How many times have you been to Vegas? Only a couple. Okay. Same experience each time? Yeah, just hang out, do the couple shows, go to some casinos, have some drinks. I knew that here, except for the show specifically. Mm-hmm. Half the time we go there, it's a work event, which we really don't do any work. No, we don't. I mean, no, honestly, God, it, that's our excuse to go. I do so that I can relay back to the bosses that we went. But Do you actually go to those things? A couple times, yeah. So I can well, take some notes and, you know, learn something so that... One you're in there for five minutes. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, and then you walk out. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on. You show up. I've been, I've, I've been once. I'm like, ah, it's on a weekend. I'm going to go somewhere else. <laughs> they have the like, like, conference. is like, the art of picking the right music for your station. Like, like we don't do that. I'm not going. Yeah, I'm going to go do blow and hang out <laughs> exactly. by the pool, brother. <laughs> I'm going to go look at boobs. Yeah. You know what? Forget the pool. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Let's go do blow. <laughs> that was the highlight was the pool. Yes, it was. That was cool. Uh, by the way, you know what else Stephen King wrote? Hmm. Stand by me. I forgot about that. Oh, ooh, that guy's got to be rich. <laughs> Stephen King, nah, dude, broke. Broke as a joke. <laughs> doing all right. Well, his house looks like uh, like the Adams family house. It's Stephen King. He looks like a guy that you look, would look, never trust to babysit your kids. Have you ever seen his kids. house? No. It looks like he lives in a. It looks like the haunted mansion at Disney. Well, yeah. I mean, it's Stephen King. It's Maine, but it's just like this old Victorian house. But like, oh, if you were a neighborhood kid, mm-hmm. that would be the house that you would run by. No, I would. But I'm, even I'm if I you. knew him, I would run by. Like, no, nah, that's where that weird guy with the overbite lives. Mm-hmm. All right. Here is your question. Equinophobia is the fear of what animal? Uh, horses. It is. All right, now wait. D. Ted Smith has worked all week to put together his true or false superhero Super questions. Heroes. Yeah, baby. Here's your question. The Thing from Fantastic Four earned his nickname because of his enormous penis. <laughs> oh, I know that from experience. That's true. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That big. Wow. That big. Otherwise, they're going to call him Rocky. Oh, I can just made of rocks. Yeah. They never like, hey, oh, my. What's your name going to be? Uh, the Thing. The Thing. <laughs> right, you call that you thing. wanted to go by Rocky or Stony. Yeah. So I got something then, simple. And you had, like, part of, like, when did you go to the gym with other superheroes? You got to take a shower. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, oh we're calling him. The thing. No, somebody yeah. said, what do you call that thing? <laughs> and he went, the thing. <laughs> and actually, it was the invisible woman from Fantasia. He didn't know that she was in there when he was, you know. Lathering him up. heard her voice. Lathered, Look lathered, at that thing. Lathered him up. And I don't it, know why. I feel like if I was in a shower, it's because, what do you call that thing? I'd be like, ask your wife. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> <laughs> you see somebody beat the piss out of Ted in the shower. <laughs> I'm going to put the lasso of truth around that. <laughs> right. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Hello, Danny. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 Danny, are you uh, sober or not sober? Sober. Sober. Danny, you sound excited about that. 
I'm walking to Big Dummy, our men's room poll. What are you never going to do again? Live sports, concerts, movies, or Vegas? I guess Vegas. When's the last time you were there? Hey, it's an S hole. S hole. Oh. oh, I heard it too, too. Yeah. yeah, just the letter. Mm-hmm. I'm good. I'm you're, good. You're good. All right. <laughs> Sorry, Mike and I both reacted like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Can tell who's run the board in the last year. <laughs> <laughs> we don't care. <laughs> Whatever, just let it go through. Not, a, not our fine. <laughs> <laughs> we get days off because of it. <laughs> It's like when you get suspended from school, like, okay. All right. That'll show me. Yeah, yeah. sure. I'll do stuff. All right, Danny, here is your question. What does AARP stand for? Ooh. Oh, boy. Uh, let's see. Man, I know what they do, and I know the word retirement's probably in there. Uh, I'll get, uh, you're yeah, right. You're right. <laughs> uh... I don't know, the American Aging and Retirement Products. I'll say the American Association of Retired People. Close. The American Association of Retired Persons. 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 Uh, Which is not entirely true because they keep sending me crap. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm not retired. Give it up, buddy. Like, no matter what, I'm still working, guys. What's the other one? When you're 50. What's the other one? Oh, you get into ARP when you're 50. Oh, you do? Yeah. yeah, they just give, so you don't have to be retired. You just need to be getting old. What's the one that sends me all the stuff in the mail all the time to join our club since I'm 50? Is that AARP? That's probably That's ARP. probably AARP. All right, okay. They've been recruiting me since my 30s. Uh, <laughs> like, damn, man. I'm it's, not there yet. That's uh, all right. I like it. Do you need to see Alice yet, Miles? I got you sure. Bring me some. I mean, if you can offer it to me, <laughs> is that, is that yeah. that, I just need to find somebody to spend the weekend with. It doesn't even matter. Alone time. Whatever, man. Oh, yeah. What'd you do this weekend? <laughs> Nothing. Not, Not a, a damn, damn thing, damn brother. Thing. Pop feel, the Alice spent the weekend alone. Got a little lightheaded. I feel how soft and lotiony my hands are, though. <laughs> Ironically, I learned how to clear my browser history. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, there, Danny. Here's your question. In 1687, Sir Isaac Newton introduced his three laws of what? Uh, I believe, uh, God, I don't know if they're all gravity or just one's gravity. I guess I'll just go with, uh, gravity. Physics, motion, motion. Uh, The first law, an object will not change its motion unless other forces act on it. Law two, the force of an object is equal to its mass times acceleration. And finally, law three, when two objects interact, they apply forces to each other of equal magnitude and opposite direction. Hmm. Like seeing, right, the harder the pitcher pitches, the farther the ball, ball goes. goes if you hit it. Correct. Right. Also, the quicker you would drop to the ground if you take it in the head. Yep. Yeah, see, all those things. All right, your question. What is the Italian name for squid in a restaurant? Calamari. There you go. Oh, hey. Do you, like it, uh, do you like it breaded or just by itself? And they just, breaded. Yeah, bro, like, man, yeah. isn't that disappointing when you order calamari and it's just the octopus ring? I can deal with it, but you better, it better have grill marks. Okay, that's a fair. That's I don't fair. think I've had that. I've had it once. It's not yeah. bad. I, I do like the taste of the grilled, but I still prefer it uh, deep fried. Oh, me yeah. too. And I just like the rings. No, I like the little guys with the do legs. You? I like legs guys. Yeah, I don't. I'm not. I'm not I, I'm, I like the rings. Because I feel like I'm eating the whole deal. You know what I mean? You are. Yeah. But I'm 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 okay to not eat that. Okay. Yeah. That's the goat's eyeball to this. Hello, Justin. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, gentlemen. Hola. Hola. Justin, are you on team sober or team not sober? Uh, I just cracked my first beer of the day. So you're oh, sober. All right. That's what he says to the cop. Yeah. The cop says, Yeah, but you're in your yeah, car. Right, exactly. <laughs> and it's a tall boy. <laughs> right. <laughs> but sir, you're driving. Sir. But uh, sure, it's a forty, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> my first beer. It's my first one today. All right, our men's room poll, never do again. Live sports, concerts, movies, or Vegas? Oh, that's a tough one, man. I guess I would have to say Vegas because the other ones uh, I probably couldn't live without. Okay. I'm with you, dude. Yeah, it's just law of averages. I do these other things more than I go to Vegas. And Correct. what I do when I get to Vegas, well, a lot of times I do that at concerts specifically, but the other things, you know. No one says you couldn't go to Reno. <laughs> right? Has anyone ever like won uh, a trip to Reno? Like you know, you're on the game show, sure. 
It's almost like Price is Right. Oh, we went well, to Tahoe the, yeah, the yeah, other year. Yeah, Lake, Tahoe, Lake Tahoe. But Tahoe, Tahoe, Tahoe gets one thing, and it's always lovely Lake Tahoe if it's on a, on a game show. Lovely Lake. Well, they the don't say, here, they'll say here, fabulous here, Las yeah. Vegas. If it's Reno, they're like, <laughs> Reno. Reno. Well, There's about, no prefix. The thing about, uh, the thing about Tahoe is... <laughs> it smells the, like armpit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At the south end of the lake, that's the old school. That's like Correct. the Fremont of Las Vegas. Yeah. But if you go to the north end, it's the newer section. So they do have like, but then it takes three hours to drive around the damn lake. That is the thing. So you're so far away from everything. But Reno, just kind of like, ooh, we're giving you an air freshener and a trip to Reno. <laughs> <laughs> and five glass eyes that you can use as poker chips. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Here is your question. Nakatomi Plaza is yeah. the setting for what movie? Oh, going to go have to go to my favorite Christmas movie, Die Hard. I was going to say Christmas movie. One Just and bang bang off, Ted. I don't, one and done, drunk guy. It's July. I'm not getting into it. But before we let you go, man, Ted worked all week on a superhero true or false question. Here is your question. Superman is into amputee porn. True or false? Oh, <laughs> I'm going to say true. No, dude. He's actually into... Come on, He's into stepmom porn. Just remember his There's upbringing. All, what, what, is that, what, is, what is all that stuff? Stepbrother, stepmom, step... What, what is that? It's everywhere. It is. Uh, it's called the thumbnail miles. I know, but it's a, is that really... <laughs> it's a lot of people's fantasy, apparently. I clicked on porn categories today. There are more than... I thought I had a pretty good idea. Not only are there a lot of categories, but on this particular webpage, they put up the pictures... So the way my desk faces at work, I face the hallway. So I'm scrolling through it as fast as I can. <laughs> I mean, there were some where like, I had to stop. Like, My wow. theory is that there was some of it out there. And then somehow, like, cause that's the, I always say that's the issue is that there's porn actresses I want to see. But that's the story. Well, that's the label. Right. So, so I, like, you don't want I know, to but I'm book. saying I think it got so popular because people were trying to click on those. You want to see the actress. Right. And it's like, God, I feel uh -huh. dirty. More of Big Tummy coming up, 206-803-ROCK. Are you dealing with a personal injury? Don't go it alone. Turn to the experienced team at Phillips Law Firm. Their attorneys have helped thousands of clients get the compensation they deserve. Call Phillips Law Firm now. Call 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. La nueva marca Break Best Select Pro de O'Reilly Auto Parts eleva el estándar de las balatas y discos de freno para vehículos nacionales. Para fórmulas de fricción específicas para cada vehículo, cuñas antirruido Quitec y herrajes de acero inoxidable, elige Break Best Select Pro de venta exclusiva en tu tienda O'Reilly Auto Parts. Oh, 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 Hey, it's Mike Hawk. Join me every Thursday at 1 p.m. exclusively on the Odyssey app as we go live with Odyssey. Join in on the action as we cover interesting facts, top 10 lists, and some fun new games. Follow the Men's Room page on the Odyssey app and join in all the fun Thursday afternoons at 1. 99.9 KISW. We return to the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. <laughs> <laughs> Seattle Supersonic Legend Sean Kim coming up on the program right after the game known as Big Dummy 206 803 Rock. Hello, <laughs> Jason. Welcome to the men's room. Oh. Hola. Hola. Jason, are you sober or not sober? <laughs> Hello. 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 Jason, welcome to the show. Yes. Jason, are you What's sober? Up, boys? You, we're doing good. Are you sober or not sober? Well, I'm working. Okay. So I like to say I'm not sober. There you go. All right. <laughs> All right, Jason. Never do again. Live sports, concerts, movies, or Vegas? One more time. I'm sorry. Live sports, concerts, movies, or Vegas? What will you never do again? If you have to pick one. Never do again? Mm-hmm. Concerts, movies. Vegas sports. or live sports, yeah. Uh, I'm good on Vegas. I, I've, I've done it. Seen it enough. Okay. All right, there we go. All right, Jason, here is your question. Which U.S. president ordered the first troops into Vietnam, starting the ground war for the U.S.? Eisenhower. LBJ? LBJ. Lyndon B. Johnson. Do you know what the B stood for? Brandon. Big. Uh oh. <laughs> Lyndon Big Johnson. That's right. Big Johnson. All right. Surprised you didn't know that, Ted. You're yeah, I, you know what? I'm disappointed in myself. I know you don't know everything, but now you know. I should have. You should have known that. All right, your question. During the 1990s, what candy bar 
use Bart Simpson as a spokes character for their TV ads. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, crap. Um, you know this. Was it a Butterfinger? Yes, oh. it was. One and done. Nice job. Oh, so the nickname for your average oh, proctologist. That was too. That was too. too. That was too. Oh. That was too. That's right. Well, Butterfinger. Damn. I'm Dr. Butterfinger. Game is Big Dummy 206 803 Rock. That was a good. Like, every time somebody drops a pass or whatever. Nice hands, Butterfingers. Butterfingers. Hello, Sean. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, gentlemen. Hola. Sean, are you sober or not sober? Uh, not sober. What are you smoking or drinking over there, Sean? Uh, I'll be drinking today, friends. Nice, nice. Good afternoon for that. All right, what are you going to never going to do again? Live sports, concerts, movies, or Vegas? Vegas. Big Vegas. Okay. Okay. All right, Sean, here is your question. Multiple choice. In which state would you find the world's only ventriloquism museum? That's right, the only ventriloquism museum. Is it Maryland, New York, California, or Kentucky? I'll say Kentucky. I was going to say the same thing just because it's so weird. Why did you guess Kentucky? That's the last state I would have guessed. It's just oddball and out of the way. (laughs) Right, it makes so little sense that that should be it. Right. All right. Well, since you're one and done, we have uh, the Ted Smith superhero true and false questions. This is your question: Batman always smells his fingers after scratching himself. True or false? I'd have to go true with that. Whoops. Sorry. Yeah, oh, that's true. Hundred percent correct. It yeah. used to really bug Robin. In fact, that's why Batman wears gloves a lot now. Right? It does. Yeah, because Robin's like, dude, you got to stop. You're embarrassing yourself. You know what I mean? Like, it makes me look. Yeah. My nickname is Robin, and I'm just wearing a pair of underwear, but you're the one who embarrasses me. You understand how deep that goes? Game is Big Dummy, 206 803 Rob. Hello, Bud Light Julie. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, gentlemen. Hola. Julie, are you sober or not sober today? Uh, Not sober. Okay. Are we doing lemon drops? Are we doing Bud Light? <laughs> oh. Uh, I did one butt light, and then I decided something different. So now I'm enjoying the captain. Oh, the captain! Ooh, Ooh. For you. What are you mixing with? <laughs> no, she's talking about Captain Crumbs. They're having oh. coitus. Oh yeah, no Coke. Try a little Captain of Ginger. Ooh, ginger! Yeah, yeah. yeah. Captain of Ginger is delicious, oh. especially on an really? airplane. All right, Julie. Well, you never do again. Live sports, concerts, movies, or Las Vegas? Uh, live sports. Live sports. Okay. Wow. All right, Julie, since you brought up sports, here's your question. What NFL team did Vince Lombardi, uh, what team did Vince Lombardi coach after leaving the Green Bay Packers? Ooh. Um, I'll say the Lions. Not bad, guys. Washington. Washington, that is correct. Hey, he was there for a year, and then he died. Oh, really? Yeah. He Uh, He only coached, like, what actually... I can't remember if he actually coached. He was named head coach, and then I can't remember if he did if he did coach for a year or didn't, and then passed away. Damn. Okay. Honestly, it's really sad. I was going to say that's not a pick me up story. Well, no, no. What's oh, even sadder, cool, is that back in the day, you know, everybody had all these weird stereotypes about getting checked for uh, prostate cancer. Yeah. And he was like, nobody's putting a finger or whatever. He dies from prostate cancer because he was, basically because he wouldn't get the test. Mm. Just because of the methodology. Correct. Good Lord, man. Okay, in February 69, Lombardi became the head coach for Washington. Uh, He then died during the 1970 preseason, so he coached one year and then, (coughs) yeah, died during the preseason. Okay, Mm. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I know. It's it's a terrible story. That's why it's like. He should have seen Dr. Butterfinger. Yeah, just go. All right, Julie, your question. In the fable, the tortoise and the hare, what animal judges the race? Hmm. A rabbit. Fox? Fox. That's actually why the tortoise run, the fox ate the original rabbit. You couldn't have two hares. What, are you saying the hares wouldn't be fair? You're saying they'd be partial? You don't know that. Mm -hmm. That is unfair. I will say, right. when I trim my nether regions, I just leave, always leave just two hairs. <laughs> leave them two real, hairs, real yes. long. It's like a little Fu Manchu mustache. It's like curb finders for underwear. Yep. All right. Truly, your question is, what is the capital of Puerto Rico? We even have some islands in the area that share the name. Mm-hmm. We have a salsa that shares the name. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
Um, you got it. San Juan. Yes, indeed. It's like go. Virgin Land? Mm -hmm. Virgin Land. You yeah. named the damn islands instead of our salsa. Just a great chance to promote our product there. I thought that'd be too obvious. Oh, okay. I really did. And hey, I forgot. Uh, Big Dummy 206 803 Rock. Yeah. 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 Dip responsibly. Hello, Brad. Welcome to the men's room. Yeah, what's up, guys? It's Brad the Meat Man. Oh, <laughs> hey, Brad. What's up, Brad? <laughs> what up, Chris? You Are you back in Washington State? Yeah, dude. We, we were in Shemot this morning. I'm driving up with Lance. Do you know where we're going? Oh, for sure. Okay, so you're sober then, Brad. Gotcha. Oh, no, no. No, Lance is <laughs> driving. All right, driving. okay. No, no, no man. Hell no, no man. my reputation? <laughs> hell no. How many times have you made him pull over so you could pee? <laughs> Nah, dude, doing shots. No big deal. All right, Brad. What are you never going to do again on our men's room poll? Live sports, <laughs> concerts, movies, or Vegas? You know, I was going to say Vegas, but if it's going to a movie, like to a movie theater, I would I would lose that. No, no, no but no, also it's, on you demand. You can't watch them at yeah. home. Can't watch them on a plane. Oh, no, 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 then Vegas. Vegas. It's got to be Vegas. All right. Yeah. All right, Brad, here's your question. What flavor of Pop-Tart does Buddy the Elf use in his spaghetti and Elf? Flavor pop tart? Yeah. Uh, it's gotta be strawberry. Chocolate? Chocolate. Chocolate fudge, yeah. So if you had to mix a pop tart in your spaghetti, there? Brad, would you go a <laughs> strawberry pop tart in your spaghetti if you had to use a pop tart? I mean, yeah, you know, fruit, sure. Ah, no, I think I go brown sugar, man. Mm. Unfrosted. Mm. All right. You're smart. You're, thank you. Yes, I know how to mix pop tarts and pasta, brother. This is <laughs> I am your source. All right, your question: In what city is the grassy knoll? Um, uh, oh, that's where the dude. That's where JFK got shot. That is correct. All right, come on, Brad. You know this. It's Texas. It's Texas. It's uh. On how it? do you know all of this and can't think of the city? Houston. Ah. Dallas. Dallas. What's bigger population wise? Houston, Houston or Dallas? Houston. Houston, Houston. Houston. Yeah. I know from the land mass standpoint. But that's why. You know, there's all these all misnomers right. okay. with cities, okay. right? So you say, well, Houston adds X number of people. If Houston were located in Washington State, it would stretch basically to Olympia. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, yeah, like you live, quote unquote, in a heavily populated city, but it's not densely populated. Well, you just call. Everything around you, 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 could places do, you, like, could do, you could do that here, but like New Orleans, Seattle, Baltimore, places were geographically kind of small. We have a lot more people than they do, as far mm -hmm. as just your concentrate. DC, right? DC is not a large place, but there are a whole lot of people, correct? But again, if you made Seattle the size of Houston, we have if we stretched to Olympia and then probably hell, I don't know, past Bellevue, like, yeah, we'd have a lot of people too. So it's one big giant farm. Yeah. All right, it's your dead. question. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like me. A, a giant farm, yes. Just like you, Brad. <laughs> Welcome to Brad, Texas. <laughs> State flower is a cow. All right. <laughs> Here's your question. The motto, a whole different animal, is the slogan for which airline? JetBlue, Spirit, Frontier, or Allegiant? Uh, Spirit. Spirit. What? Allegiant? Allegiant. Yeah. No, Frontier. Sorry. Frontier. 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 A whole different uh, animal. You didn't know either. I do think Spirit is more deserving of that. Mm -hmm. Whatever you're used yeah, to on an airline, it ain't happening oh, here, brother. Uh, great uh, great fight on uh, on the internet there of uh, two ladies on a Frontier flight from Philly to Vegas. Oh, was that Frontier with the fight broken? Mm -hmm. Jesus. I watched that video. I'm with the other people in the seats where they're just like, just both of you shut the F up. Wait, just shut up. And they're like, I'll beat your ass. It's like, look, you, I can't hit you. Right. We all know that. Just like, shut up. We're going to Vegas. Typically, on the way to Vegas, people are in a very good mood. You know what I'm saying? And Coming two women that started it were together. Oh, for real? Yeah. Oh, man. At least I thought, okay. You're going to have a hell of a weekend. God almighty. All right, here's your Jennifer. question. <laughs> what was Mila Kunis's character's name on that 70s show? That hot chick. God bless America. <laughs> That's very patriotic of you. Oh, she was so hot, too. Yes, uh, she still is. She still is, dude. Honestly, I don't know if I can think of her name right now. I, and I, I don't know. <laughs> I, uh, Carol. <laughs> uh, I think the name is fitting of the character, right? Because it was. 
What was it? Tiffany. Jackie. 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 Uh, Jackie. Jackie. Man, I am feeling miserably today. No, I I couldn't remember her name either. Look, with Mila Kunis, I don't care what her character's name is. It could be Butch. I just want to see her. I don't even care what her role is. I just want to look at her. And Jack Hay is a real actor. Yes, Jack Hay is an actual yeah. person. <laughs> hey! Hey! <laughs> All right, your question. How many digits of pi are there? How many digits? Mm-hmm. I'll accept one of two it's, answers. It's it's, infi- it's infinity. It is infinity. I would accept... Brad, I'll see you tomorrow, dude. I'd accept three or infinite, because most people say 3.14. Right. I'd say, All right, I'll take that. Or infinite. I'd have said eight. Mm-hmm. But I, which, you're not wrong... You know, if it's infinite, basically any number you list would be fair. <laughs> so here's my thing. They have established the fact that they believe uh, pi to be infinite. And then once every two years, they'll tell you, our new supercomputer got this many numbers. Well, if it's infinite, you know, why are you still pursuing this? Right. It does. If you know that it is infinite, you understand then the only thing you're going to discover is failure. It is impossible for you to solve it. Right. If it so mm-hmm. why? Why do we care? We'll stick with 3.14. We're done, guys. Uh, my niece rattled off at least 90 seconds. Her teacher challenged the class to try to, to go as far back as they could on Pi. I showed you that video 90 seconds ago. Now, long, okay, of, of, now, of but wait. Was she right? Because I could go 3.14772. She, no, she, seven, seven, she was correct. Because if I told you that I believe that, you'd be like, wow, dude, that's impressive. It's not. I lied. But she actually got the right numbers. She did. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Game is a big dummy. 206 803 Rock. <laughs> Hello, Tom. Welcome to the men's room. How you doing in that? Oh, no. Tom, are you sober or not sober? I'm sober. Okay. Tom, welcome to Big Dumb. All right, what are you never going to do again there? Live sports, concerts, movies, or Vegas? Uh, I have to say Vegas. Vegas. Have you been? Yes, several when's times. The, when's the last time? Oh, uh, probably been uh, 20 years almost. Okay. It's been a while. All right. Actually, my main motivation to go to Vegas now, I want to see, uh, what's the new building? The Orb? The that Globe? Orb looks amazing. Or it the, is. It, it sounds stupid, but, like, they were showing what it can do just on the outside. So even if I don't get inside to see the event, I was like, that's actually is really... the Sphere? Yeah. Might be the Sphere. It's the so. Sphere. I know it's something round, all right? I saw one uh, perspective from a pilot who's flying into Vegas, and the Sphere just had a giant-ass eyeball that just oh. kept, like, staring at the plane <laughs> as it's rolling in. <laughs> it's weird. And it, I mean, it looks so cool, though, man. All right, here is your question. Alexander the Great was the leader of which empire? He was Greek. Roman. Macedonian. They're very definitive differences, right? Between uh, Greek, Roman, Macedonian. Well, his father was Alexander of Macedon, Philip of Macedon. That thing is crazy. Are you looking at it? Yeah. Is that new? It, yeah. Have you it, not seen it? No. It, it opens officially, I want to say, in September. U2 is going to be the first performance at the Sphere. Mm. Are they playing? They're actually playing, they're playing inside? inside. So the inside is like a concert hall, auditorium, sporting event, whatever you got to do. But the outside is the thing. Seriously, if you have the chance to Google image the, the sphere, sphere. Thank you. Wow. In Vegas. They're ju- and they're just kind of practicing it right now. Yeah, that's all they're doing mm. right now. This huh. is not officially. Man, it is, is that cool? It's super cool. Damn. So now maybe I have to okay. go back to Vegas. All right. I know. Like, I mean, I yeah, yeah, exactly. You know what the hell with movies? Yeah, forget movies. Actually, that would be... Yeah. That would be... How cool is that thing? Yeah. That's awesome. All right. Back to you, Tom. Your question. What TV judge wrote the book, quote, Don't pee on my leg and tell me it's raining? <laughs> TV judge? Yes. There's like one. Um, There's a lot of TV judges. I don't know. Harry from Night Court? Harry from Night Club. No, I'll say Judy. Judge Judy, yes. There's also Uh-oh. Judge, uh, what's it, uh, Brown. Right. Walker. Is he still doing a show? Yeah. Judge Steve Harvey. Judge Steve Harvey, yeah. I guess, uh, yeah. It's not a lot. All right, your question. What pop vocal group performs at the wedding in Bridesmaids? Um, <laughs> I have no idea. Genesis. Is it the group or just the song? I think it's the actual group. I think. Well, it's Wilson Phillips is the song. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry, I didn't see the movie. 
No, I just, I'm trying to remember the end of the movie. I felt like it was just the actor singing it. I, I could be totally It could have been. I don't know. Either way, Wilson Phillips is awful. All right, a question. In the Disney movie 101 Dalmatians, what was stolen from the Deerly family? Don't overthink it. Uh, two of the puppies. In the Disney movie 101 Dalmatians, what was stolen from the Deerly family was 101 Dalmatians. Oh, they took them all. Which, you know, frankly, might be a good thing. At that point, you're a dog. Boy. I'm just saying. Sir, you are correct. They were in the movie. They were in the movie. Okay. Let's hold on. Please don't sing that song. God, I hate that song, man. Just for one more day. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, your question. What movie character said, I may not be a smart man, but I know what love is? Jenny, that was Forrest Gump. You know, what's on a quick side note, does that make Lou Graham... From foreign or stupid. Because he wants to know what love is? He wants to know what love is. Forrest Gump's like, I'm not a smart man. I know what love is. No, but that guy's trying to set a trap. Like, I want to know what love is. <laughs> Just you have to show me. <laughs> Right? It set a trap. You're saying he's a predator. Reforms Gump's just like, no, I, I respect love. I think I know what Jenny did now. Yeah. Oh. More Big Dummy coming up. 206-803-ROCK. 99.9 KISW. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Channel Supersonic legend Sean Kemp. Coming up on the program. In the meantime, the game is Big Dummy. 206-803-ROCK. Hello, Steve. Welcome to the Men's Room. Hey. Hola, bichola. Hola. Hola. Steve, are you sober or not sober? Sober. All right, Steve, welcome to Big Dummy. Our men's room poll. Pick one to never do again. Live sports, concerts, movies, or Las Vegas? I'm going to have to go with live sports. Uh, I'm not poor, but it's just too expensive to go. Well, you can't even watch them on television is the problem, Steve. Well, some of them, but like most Mariners games are televised and Seahawks games are televised. No, but what we're saying is if you give up sports in this particular category, even on TV, like you can't watch it. Oh, well, then I have to go with uh, lost wages. Lost <laughs> wages. All right. Which, again, could be concerts, mm-hmm. sports, or Las Vegas. Could be all of it. <laughs> yeah. All right, Steve, here is your question. Who played Norman Bates in the 1998 remake of Psycho? Oh, man, the remake. Mm -hmm. I I was going to say Anthony Perkins, but that was the original. Correct. The remake. The remake, 1998. Typically, this actor does more... He's not himself funny, but he is cast in comedies a lot. You got it, Ted. (laughs) Once you figure out your fingers there, yes. Same shape, but... Um... I don't know. I'd say uh, Paul Paul Rubens. Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn, yes. Vince, oh, Vince Vaughn. Wow. Yeah. Is that weird to make a V with your two middle fingers? Yeah, Yeah, most people, that's just not, that's just not the go-to. Most people do the peace sign or something, man. Mm -hmm. Weirdo. All right, your question. What war saw the use of tanks in battle for the first time? Well, gentlemen, it's been nice talking to you. I love you guys. Miles, we miss you on Twitter. Um, oh. I'd say World War One. All right, hey, sure. yeah. Ted was hoping so bad that he I was know, wrong. That, that's Once, a, I like that guy, but that's a long setup. I was like, please tell me, get it wrong. Once you have the super confidence, like, well, it's been nice. Game is Big Dummy 206 803 Rock. Hey, Hello, Andrea. Welcome to the men's room. Uh, Andrea, are you sober or not sober? Not sober. Okay, then. Andrea. Do you spell Andrea the way Andrea spells Andrea? Sure do. So, so do you have to explain to people every time that it's Andrea and not Andrea? For sure, okay. yeah. Okay. All right, Andrea, what are you never doing again? Live sports, concerts, movies, or Vegas? Movies. Movies. What's the last right, good I'm, movie I'm, you I'm, saw? I'm right there with you. What's the last good movie you saw? Uh, John Wick 4. Okay. I watched that very recently. Granted, at home. I just feel like I could get into shows. If that's if, if that's the one that I, I could give up. What, you mean like Vegas shows? No. If I if I pick the category of movies that I'd never watch again. There's enough television. Yeah, there's enough shows the out there that okay. I, I can right. kind of make up for my viewing that way. Not that I, I, I'd miss the movies. But of course. I could find something. I think, you, I think you'd miss documentaries a lot. I would. Oh, I watch the hell out of it. Yeah, you do watch a lot of documentaries. Mm-hmm. 
All right, Andrea, here's your question. What English document was signed in 1215? Uh, the Treaty of Paris? The Magna Carta. <laughs> Do you remember what the Magna Carta was about? Uh, I don't. Some with the English and French. Uh, but it's the first written document writing that the king and his government were not above the law. Oh, that's a big one. I think something we have to sign like every two years. Like, yeah. Quick reminder. Quick reminder. Not... All right, your question. What song does Tom Cruise lip sync to in his underwear in Risky Business? Yeah. Oh, God. Um... I don't know. I cannot remember. Uh, no, I don't know. Pass. But you can picture the scene. You just can't remember the song. I can. I see the white shirt and everything. That would be old time rock and roll. Bob C. Ah, done. Right, your question. What is the first month comprised of 30 days? At least or on the number? On the number. April. All right. Nice job. No, I'm you're able to get that one. Game is Big Dummy, 206-803-ROCK. Hey, Hello, Dummy. Justin. Welcome to the men's room. Hola, gentlemen. Hola. Hola. Justin, sober or not sober? Sober. Justin, welcome to Big Dummy. <laughs> okay, our men's room poll, never do again. Will it be live sports, <laughs> concerts, movies, or Vegas? Uh, Las Vegas. Vegas it is. All right, Justin, here is your question. What type of precipitation does a pluviometer measure? A pluviometer. Can you repeat the question one, one, one more time? What type of precipitation does a pluviometer measure? Is that sweat? Hail. Rain. Rain. Good rain. Uh, Standard, hmm. boring, a pluviometer. It's called like a rainometer. Never heard of that. Yeah. Well, you know, my dad is installed on top of uh, the south. He has a pluviometer. Is that how we know that seven and a half inches of rain fell in Vermont? And I'm assuming you measure it with world. your pluviometer. Okay. Oh, for his like 65th birthday, he got one of those like full weather station type fields. What is the full weather station? Well, like a weather vane, barometer, thermometer. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, you got rain, temp, uh, wind direction, wind speed. Um, uh, let's see here. The angle of, of the sun, that's something else I can't quite remember. I, I think it's humidity. Yeah, my dad, is he's kind of interested in that stuff. In his backyard, he's got all these different, it's just glass tubes. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember which ones do what, but he'll just glance at it and know what's up. Huh. He'll be like, oh, the big one there is the barometric pressure. I'm like, hey, you say so, dude. But they use a rain gauge <laughs> to measure the rain. I guess. So is that just like the style? I, man, I don't know. I just know they use it in the measurement of rainfall. But right, I don't know if they're measuring inches or some other quantity of what rain could possibly be. And what was it called? Pluviometer. P-L-U-V-I-O meter. Pluviometer. All right. Justin, here's your question. Who was the captain of the Enterprise from Star Trek before James T. Kirk? Oh, my. Come on, Ted. Yeah, too easy. I mean, Ted wrote the question, man. I had to look it up. <laughs> oh, I should have told you the answer. Now, do dude. we know this? It, what, there was no Star Trek before this, so, so this, this is a character Star that Trek, we know that was that was that he replaced. It, it's part of Star Trek lore from the original series to the okay. remakes of the movies. Right. This particular captain is always mentioned. He was the captain before Kirk was captain of the Enterprise, and I believe there's a TV one. show. I believe he was in the first, definitely in the pilot episode. I don't know if he was in the first episode, but he's also, I want to say he's in his own TV show now. Okay. Any guesses? Uh, Captain Crunch. Boy, uh, uh, Commander Pike? Man, oh, man. Oh, you got him, man. Lee. How about that? Okay, very good. Oh, about that. Game is Big Dummy, 206-803-ROCK. All right, so... A pluviometer? Is just the right, correct word for a rain gauge. Big really? Yep. That's all, okay, Daddy. so they're the same damn thing. Yep. You know, next time we talk to a meteorologist, we've had two or three on the show over the years. Mm -hmm. Why do you guys keep saying rain gauge? Why don't you call it what it is? A pluviometer. Because yeah. it doesn't sound cool, that's why. It's hard to say on the air. A pluviometer? 
pluviometer. <laughs> oh, if I was a weatherman, I'd screw it up all the time. The pluviometer. The, the rain gauge. Hello, Chad. Welcome to the men's room. Liquor and whores. Liquor and Chad, are you sober or not sober? I'm sober. Just getting off work. Okay. All right, Chad, never do again. Live sports, concerts, movies, or Las Vegas? Oh, definitely live sports. Live sports. You don't like sports? No, I do, but every time I watch, they tend to lose, so I stop <laughs> watching. Get rid of the heartbreak. Okay. Stop watching the Mariners. Yeah, obviously you've been a big Mariners fan. I don't fan. like baseball. Ah, uh, okay. Ever since baseball had that strike, I was done. How long ago was that? Oh, God, back in the 90s? That, don't feel know. bad. I have a friend to this day, right? Huge Mother Love Bone fan, my buddy Tony. Andrew Wood dies, but the band carries on as Pearl Jam with that event. To this day, he would not listen to Pearl Jam. That is cool. Oh, wow. That is weird. Oh, he's a weird dude. I'm not I'm just saying. He, like, <laughs> to this day, he's like, I won't listen to him. Like, wow. Okay, man. Oh, by the way, a text came in. I like this. It says, I knew a light-skinned black girl named Andrea. She was an absolute 10 out of 10. There's no purpose to this text. Just wanted to say thanks for reminding me that she existed. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. All right, Chad, here's your question. What 2001 Rachel Lee Cook film was based on an old Saturday morning cartoon series? Oh, my God. Um, say that again. Let's say... What 2000... Just seen the Pussycat. Oh, boom. There you go. Never mind. Good. Uh, Good you're one and done, but we do have Ted's superhero. Superheroes. True or false questions for you. True or false? I love superheroes. Uh, all right, perfect. Maybe Who's you your favorite know. superhero? Uh, probably that would be Deadpool. Okay, yeah. Hmm, that's right. a lot of people's. Well, in this case, The Flash. The Flash is called The Flash, not because he's fast, but because he likes to expose his genitalia to strangers. Oh, that's 100% true. It is. He actually does it so fast that nobody actually <laughs> right. knows. They can't prove it. Like, I'm pretty sure. It's like putting in a single frame of penis in a kid's movie. <laughs> yeah, it's a subliminal message, like yeah. in Fight Club. Yeah, exactly. You got to stop the DVD to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. Here's uh, Big Dummy 206 803 Rock. Hello, Craig. <laughs> Welcome to the men's room. Hola. 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 Craig, are you on Team Sober or Team Not Sober? Team Sober. Greg, welcome to Big Dummy. All right, our men's room poll. Never do again. Live sports, concerts, movies, or Vegas? I'll do sports. Live sports again? Hmm, okay. <laughs> I thought everybody in this room's like, what? How dare you? <laughs> All right, Craig, here's your question. Who kicked last second field goals to win two different Super Bowls? Uh, Being a huge sports fan, you obviously are. Yeah, uh... I can think of any kicker I can think of. Um, God, I can't even think of it. Miles Montgomery, I don't know. Miles sure. Montgomery. Vinatieri? Yep, Adam Vinatieri. Pats and the Colts. How many years did he play? I just remember toward the end of it. I mean, it's got to be. Like, he's losing his touch. I'm like, he's been playing for 436 years. Give the guy a break. Jesus. 24 seasons. 24 seasons. Really? Is he losing his touch after 24 seasons? Who to funk it? Loser. All right, here's your question. <laughs> the word pub is short for what? Public house. Huh? Damn. Okay. Well done. I didn't even know that it was a, a abbreviated word. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. Public house. Oh, public house. You hear about oh. it more if you go to England. They're, they love to tell you, even though you already know. Or so like, oh, you're a yank. You know, pub is... Short for public, like, yeah, I do know that. And that's, like, a new thing now. A lot of bars and stuff call themselves public houses. Yeah, they'll call them, right. and that's why. Because they're cool and edgy. Yeah, yeah, I, was like, uh, I was like, oh, I wasn't going to come in here. I thought maybe the queen was in here. <laughs> exactly. Thank you for letting me know it's a public house. Game is Big W, 206 803 Rock. There's no knights in here, are there? Hello, Tanner. Welcome to the men's room. <laughs> Hola. 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 Tanner, are you sober or not sober? Sober. Tanner, welcome to Big Dummy. Okay, what will you never do again? Live sports, concerts, movies, or Las Vegas? Let's go with the movies. The movies. movies. All right. Movies. All right, Tanner, we've been talking sports. Let's talk about the most popular sport in the United States, polo. How many players are on a polo team? Oh, three. Four. Four. I guess eight uh, if you count the horses. 
I was up at a random hour the other day and was watching polo highlights. What is... I mean, is it basically like hockey on horses, lacrosse on horses? Uh, I mean, are you trying to score goals? It's more like croquet on horses. Right, right, right. Because they swing down and you have like the club. Right, you got to score... Right, you got to get it through some things to score a goal. I don't know. Like, it's a bunch of sports on I mean, I'm like, that just seems like horses running around. That, I, that is for rich people. And it is for rich people. It's, it's very strange. Hey, Billy, you got a soccer ball? I don't, but I got a horse. Want to play polo? Come on. Yeah. All right, your, uh, your question. What is the last name of the Home Alone family? Oh, man. <laughs> uh, McAllister? Boom. Damn, well yeah. done. Good job. Good oh, by job. the way, uh, Ted, somebody checked in there. It says, Ted, the queen is dead. Of course, you're she's right. not at your public house. I, you're right. Damn, <laughs> they, man. they do make a fine point. <laughs> Big W is the game. 206-803-ROCK. Hey, Hello, Tony. Taylor. Welcome to the men's room. Hey, beautiful. Oh, yeah. All right. Hey, are you sober or not sober? I am sober. All right. Okay, Taylor, our men's room full. What will you never do again? Live sports, concerts, movies, or Vegas? Um, can I see Oppenheimer first and then not go to the Vegas uh, movies? We'll give you Oppenheimer, yeah, sure. and then you can cut out the movies. All right, cool. Thank you. All right. Apparently, there's a lot of nudity in this movie. Ooh, I hope so. Is this either- the same guy that does the funds? The funds? Oppenheimer? The nuclear bomb guy? Yeah, isn't, there, isn't that a famous, like, Oppenheimer funds? I don't know. Oh, you're talking about, like, the, the banking or something like yeah, that? Yeah, I thought they were connected. I don't know. They might be. Uh, no, I know they're different people. Oh. Hey, hey, Ted, by the way, it's it's Taylor from Dead Baby Rally thing. What up? Oh, what up, dude? Hey, buddy. You look majestic on that horse with your wife in Mexico. <laughs> yeah, that, that scared the ass out of me. <laughs> All right, Taylor, here's your question. In what city is the Sistine Chapel? Oh, uh, oh, oh easy. Sicily. It's not, not easy. City. Oh. oh, Rome. No. Vatican City. Vatican My City. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, totally. And it makes sense what you say it. Like, yes, that's the best place for it. All right, Taylor, what that's color that's- are mosquitoes most attracted to? Well, after my time in Mexico, I'd say bright white, but uh, I'll go <laughs> red. There he is. Believe it or not, it's blue. Hmm. That's why Smurfs always have a malaria outbreak. Hmm. Hmm. That's how they all died. That, that Every Smurf died. Kids, it's a horrible story. I'm sure your parents will tell you sometime again. <laughs> malaria outbreak, mosquitoes. Same thing with the Avatar, folks. <laughs> That's why they keep scratching themselves in the movie. Uh-huh. All right, your question. Which amendment to the United States Constitution deals with self-incrimination? Easy, the fifth one. Boom. Got it. Got See, it. dude. What do you think? One more? One more. One more, one more, one more contestant in Big Dummy. What the hell? What the hell? Big Dummy! Hello, Matt. Welcome to the men's room. Liquor and whores. Liquor, Liquor and whores. Is Matt sober or not sober? Uh, not sober, definitely. Definitely not sober. Matt, welcome to Big Dummy. Uh, our poll, you. never do again. Live sports, concerts, movies, or Vegas? I mean, movies. Let's go movies. <laughs> All, right. All right, your question. According to Greek mythology, who is the first woman on Earth? Oh, um... It's also a streaming service. Uh, Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> Hulu. <laughs> oh... Peacock. Peacock? Oh, pe- Pandora. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, Pandora. 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 <laughs> oh. She was the eve of Greek mythology. Like, they brought a woman in the world, she messed everything up. Okay. Don't that- open that box. <laughs> Actually, it was a jar, believe it or not. <laughs> Is that really why we say that? Because they were like, oh, she screwed stuff up? Yeah, so like Eve, you know, she bit the apple because women are terrible. So in Greek mythology, it was just Pandora. The idea, everything's perfect. Hey, just don't open that box right What's there. What's in the box? This is a box. And she found Gwyneth right. Paltrow's head. <laughs> Spoiler alert. All right. Oh, yeah. If you haven't seen the movie, sorry. All uh-huh. right. Your question. What does a forensic pathologist typically perform? I mean, autopsies. Yeah. All there right. you go. That was exactly nice it, Nice job. Nice job. Yeah, 
All right, so let's see here. Coming up on the program, we have uh, Seattle supersonic legend Sean Kim joining us in studio. You are listening to The Men's Room. Have you or a loved one been injured in an accident? Are you struggling to recover fair compensation? Look no further. At Phillips Law Firm, the experienced personal injury attorneys will fight for your rights and get you the justice and compensation you deserve. They handle a wide range of cases, including car accidents, slip and falls, medical malpractice, and workplace injuries. Justice is a phone call away, so don't wait. Call today for a free case review. Call 1-800-JUSTICE or visit justiceforyou.com. What's up? It's your boy, the Ted Smith. Thanks for listening to the Men's Room Daily Podcast. Want more? Check out the greatest podcast in all the land, the podcast. Be sure to subscribe and listen to a brand new episode every Tuesday night. The debauchery rolls on. You're listening to the Men's Room with Miles and Thrill. 99.9 KISW. Seattle supersonic legend Sean Kemp joining us momentarily, but first time for a few emails from the Men's Room at KISW.com. You've got me. Jump right into the birthdays, guys. I was hoping to get a birthday shout out to my son, Mike. He is 25 years old. I was hoping that uh, Coach Ted could tell him how to live it up and the Dirty Germans on how to have fun tonight. Maybe a cat fart, too. I'll thank you so much. A uh, lot of love from Mom and from Dustin. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. 25, you said, Miles? 25 years. Oh, that request was sent in from his mom. So the first thing you want to do, strippers. It's your 25th birthday. Everybody knows 25th birthday involves strippers. Not a strip club. You get strippers to the house and make this Dustin fella pay for it. Number two, body shots. Offset strippers. They don't make belly buttons for nothing. They're for holding liquor. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, as far as what you do to have fun tonight, I believe the coach just covered it all. Oh, <laughs> I have no more advice other than if you can have sex with these strippers, do that too. Yeah, in Germany, we enjoy your taco football as the coach's advice. Mm-hmm. Oh, I thought you said taco football. I was like, oh, yeah, oh, no. taco football. <laughs> but tell us, want to wish our friend Bradley, a.k.a. Mr. George, very happy 27th birthday. Can I get it? Your penis is too small, some wedding puke, and a Montgomery. Happy birthday, you beautiful bastard. From your buddies, CJ and Mary. <laughs> Montgomery! Guys, want to wish my friend Carolyn the happiest of birthdays. Could you give her a she wants a D, a your penis is too small, and a little kid fish sandwich? Also, we'd love to hear the captain talking about being a mom to twins. Love you guys. You're the best. That from Christina. She wants a D, and she's going to get one. Fish sandwich! Ooh, well, ahoy there. Obviously, the captain is a man, so I... Can't give birth to twins myself, but believe it or not, Miss Butterworth is the mother of twins. On her chest, she even has a name for them, Squirty and Leaky. Crunch Bears. But tell us, uh, it's your least favorite Patriot fan, Sam the Fishman. He's 33rd correct. birthday today. Can he please get a fish sandwich? And you guys talking all over each other about your favorite thing to cook on the barbecue. Thanks, guys. That from Trent. Fish sandwich. Are you sure? Oh, man. Well, I mean, oh, man. After last week, ribs, hopefully get up there. Oh, and, uh, and, uh, and uh, I'll tell you what, what right now, man. Uh, uh, if you think someone else is a pretty good chicken thigh on the grill, they're ready to eat, man. I'm original. Just assemble, but shave it first. From Oli's. Yeah. But y'all, I'd like to get a birthday shout out to uh, for Dr. E, my wife. She's the best. Last time she was becoming the director in training and got some good advice from the Dirty Germans, which uh, I added to the old soundbite. Now she just became the director of training. So can she get a little kid face sandwich and maybe some new advice from the Dirty Germans or words of encouragement from Coach Ted on advancing into directoring? Thanks for all the laughs, guys. That from Big B. Fish challenge. Yeah, this is quite simple. I'll tell you what, I'm a bit of an expert on this. The first thing I would do is direct your mouth to my genitals. Yeah, and then after that, I will direct my genitals into your... (laughs) And then we scream, cut! All right, you're the director now. That's going to be tough, director in training. First of all, you're kind of like a vice principal. I know how this goes. You're close, but not there yet. Big thing you got to know is those underneath you, they're not your buddies anymore. You're in charge. You make decisions that affect their lives. I'm taking this from my brother's principal, you can only hang out with teachers so often. <laughs> Seriously. He's like, I like some of my teachers, but I can't hang out with them. Right, you can't be cool. Yeah. Oh, hey, wait, one more. This guy's a little late. says, S, it's my brother Logan's birthday. I'm running real late, guys. Can I get a cat fart? You know, a cat uh, fart for Logan. You know what, for you, let's go ahead. Aaron's birthday, too. So he blows out his candles. 
All right, guys, here we go. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday. Happy, happy, happy birthday to you, to you, to you. Yaz, a dirty German, is brought to you by Men's Room Original Sausage. Available through Uli's world famous sausage, mensroomlive.com, and other fine retailers. Mmm, uh, Schweinefleisch. Ladies and gentlemen, entering the studio now, uh, Seattle supersonic legend Sean Kemp joining us on the program. Very cool. He's, he's getting in here. Yeah. Go fast. Oh, we got plenty of time. All good. Sean, thank you so much for stopping by, man. This is, uh, this is very cool. We appreciate it. We got Scott in here with us, too. Yeah, yeah, but they Scott don't know who Scott Kennedy. is. That's right. This <laughs> mic's over there. Yeah, we're all good to go. You can raise that mic up, yeah, brother. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's got to go up a long way. There we go. There we go. I should do. There we go. <laughs> hey, thank you for coming in. Oh, thank you, man. Thanks we, for having me. Yeah, we appreciate it, man. This is, uh, this is absolutely cool. By the way, uh, uh, Sean, you're here because the uh, Cantana Festival is going on August 22nd and uh, in 26th in, uh, in Renton with Tech 9, and you're hosting the entire event. Yeah, absolutely, man. That's what we're doing. It's a fun event. It's the first year we're doing it. Um, it's something that we've been putting together. We had some struggles along the way, but we've worked everything out. And uh, we're, even, we're even hoping to give out a car that day. So if anybody out there want to want to deal with us to help us deal, give out a vehicle on that uh, special day of the 26th, we would much appreciate it. Yeah, our sister station, Hot 1037, is, uh, is sponsoring the event with you guys as well. Uh, Tech 9. Kind of a big deal to have him there. How hard no, is wait, it? wait, wait, wait. Just tell me if you agree, all right? So before I even knew who Tech Nine, I knew the name, but I don't know what this dude looked like. Everyone kept telling me, dude, you look like Tech Nine. Yeah. You look like Tech Nine, yeah, right? So I finally pulled it. It's usually people. Yeah, Someone else like told me I look like Dennis Rodman. They were goddamn wrong hey, about that one. But, no, yeah. So I pulled up Tech Nine, and I'm like, oh, my God, I look like Tech Nine. Yeah, you do. <laughs> that is a weird thing. I, I can be his body double. I said that a little while ago when I walked in. They did. Like, oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, time, what, what time are you guys starting this thing? 10 a.m. 10 a.m. So it's, it's, a, it's an all day long event, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Okay. And it's free all the way until 5 o'clock with a whole day stage. Kid Sensation is on there, Donald Glaude, a lot of Seattle bigs, um, Stevie Stone, UBI from Strange Music as well. We have a whole bunch of great music. And we also have a lot of games like axe throwing and hot shots basketball and a bunch oh, cool. of food trucks and just a really fun time that's free to everybody, all ages, come through the whole day. And then as kind of a separate event, we have a ticketed concert that night time. Okay. Scott, you said you've been working on this for, you said, two years and three months? Yes. That is a long wow. time, man. So how long were you willing to dedicate your time to make this happen? Um, Just as long day. as it took, or was it yeah. like, I, I'm going to give myself three years, you know what I mean, before you just Well, I mean, it. me and Red Man are working on a, a TV show called The Dab Roast. Okay. And we've done a whole lot of podcasting with it, but now we're working on like a full Netflix version of it. Oh, right and on. as we're putting this thing together, we were like, we need more content, we need a big show to do something. So me and him created a production company called TDR Productions. And... Sean has come out to every one of our parties. He's been a part of everything. He was a guest on our show. So uh, we asked Sean, would you help us throw a big Seattle festival and host it for us? Sean's himself been trying to throw a big festival and be part of a festival for a couple years now. So we all were like, yeah, this is a great idea. I was like, Sean, what is that like? You know, you're like, hey, man, I'm going to go to these. Like, I like to go to an event because I want to party. You know what I mean? Like, I'm having a good time. But then you become such a regular at the event, so that you want to work for us. And I'd be torn, like, well, I, I like I want to get drunk and messed up, man. You know, if I, if like, I got to like work, we don't at our right. work event. Yeah, exactly. Okay, <laughs> right. <laughs> but they know that here. <laughs> That's expected here. Yeah, <laughs> we got the excuse, the radio rock and roll thing. Okay, yep. yeah. totally. And as Sean said, we're, we're trying to give a car away. So we, we're talking to a couple lots right now, but we found a charity that is willing to give a car lot a full write-off for that full retail value of that car if we can have that charity give it away at our event. And we're not trying to give a car away to the ticket winner. We're trying to give away the gift of giving. So if you win the car, you have to come up on stage, pull out your phone, and call somebody and give them a car in front of the audience. Oh, oh no nice. way. Okay. Oh, that's, that's crazy. crazy. It's, about, it's about putting a smile on people's faces, man. It's about doing the stuff in the community, but also it's a, it's a subject of surprise of someone to be able to help out someone else. Right. Sure. And, and Sean, what what what, uh, what what year did you get to Seattle? Was it like seventy two? Maybe <laughs> seventy. Like what, no, what, what? I got I got here. I, 
I got here in 1989. 89, yeah. 80, I, I arrived Damn, in 1989. I'm just kidding. I know he was born in 69. I was just giving him a I arrived in 1989, and I'm over here laughing my butt off. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been here forever, man. I have, I've seen the change of the city, and um, I've done a lot of community work, and I'm all about that. I mean, you can't, you know, you can't live in a place, uh, expect to make money off people and not be a part of the community. It, right. it doesn't work that way. Sure, yeah. yeah. And your kids still living in Seattle? Absolutely, they are. And uh, you had two uh, kid sons that play college basketball. Too. Absolutely, I still got one. That's uh, he's a he's a junior in college. Um, he's a, he's still playing right now. So absolutely, do they want your advice or do right. they want you to shut up? You know they what I mean? Me to shut. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really? I would have to. When it comes to your kids of that sort, I would have to go get a other basketball player. I would go like go talk to Jamal Crawford. I would go talk to so many other guys that come over and put an influence on my sons because they don't really want to hear from you. That's, that's the crazy thing. I, if you're the parent, it doesn't well, matter what you say. And your buddy comes over, says the exact same thing. They're yeah. like, "Thank you." Yeah, absolutely. Talk I mean, about I mean, you, Ted. So you got you got <laughs> you got to do that ahead of time. Absolutely. Could you could you still dunk on one of your kids? I, you know what? And that, the, this is the problem. I was just telling someone yesterday. I, mean, I go out and I try to play some ball with my son. He's trying to dunk on me. He's at the age now where he just wants to dunk on me one time. So I actually have to go out there and play this Bill Lambert defense. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> physical. <laughs> so a little bit more physical than that. Um, definitely. Yeah, that's that. Now, the crazy thing is, man, and I did not realize this, and Miles was researching this earlier today. You know, most of, you got Kobe, you had LeBron James, right? And they're, they're drafted out of high school. But in your case, what was it, University of Kentucky, I guess? Yeah, but see, I never, I never played college never played. ball. Right. Then never, a Juco didn't play. And they got drafted in the first yeah, round you know, anyway. But you, right. you basically were one of the first athletes that basically just, and I know that technically mm -hmm. that, but went from high school to the NBA. Yeah, I was probably the first one that went from high school to the NBA because the rest of the guys who went before me, a guy like Moses Malone, I think it was Bill Willoughby was before me, those guys actually played in the ABA. So Moses would, played in the ABA at first. Bill played in the ABA at first. I Man, I never even practiced with a college team. So I was only in school for that 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 one year, and then I was here in 1989. Uh, I graduated in '88, and I was here in '89. Did that yeah. did that stress you out more, or did that give you more confidence? And just to basically go from high school and walk onto an NBA team. Man, if, if, if I'll take you to the experience real quick, man. It's the greatest feeling in this world. So here you are, you know, you're this kid. You worked your butt off. Obviously, you got to have a lot of swag, a lot of confidence, you know, to get drafted. But once you do get drafted, this is the realization. So I get drafted at the number 17 pick in Seattle in 1989. I um. How do they know, do that then? Do they call you on the phone? Like, no, I'm, watching, was... I'm actually watching the draft. So I knew that I got drafted, and I had a pretty good feeling I was going to come to Seattle, and I'm and I'm very excited, but. Then I look at this list, and it has a projected of players, and then it has everybody. So it has A through Z. These guys are trying out for the team, guys who are already on the contract. And I look at the 16 names on this list, and I'm at number 16. And I said, damn. Well, now I made it. Now I got a whole other mountain to climb. Yeah. And you, you uh, grew up in uh, Indiana, right? Absolutely. And you should have been the Indiana State Player of the Year, but yeah. you didn't go to Indiana. So I didn't you, go to Indiana. So they so, kind of screwed uh, you. Over and they gave did. to somebody they, else. They let who me went know to right Purdue away. or Indiana? Right? I went to Kentucky, the the, the the most hated school that you could possibly go to. <laughs> yeah, and uh, there was no chance I was going to win that award. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. How's how's Sean Kemp's cannabis doing? It's doing great, man. Business is great. I, I truly appreciate everybody's um, who's come to the store and buy a product. It's doing great. Thank you for asking. We have two stores. We have one in Belltown. We also have one in the Soto District, and they're doing great. They're getting better. Um, I always like to let people know I have two stores. I have one in the Soto District. And one in the Belltown district, and we appreciate everyone coming to both of them. I've been to the one in Belltown. Me too. A couple of times. Right. I, you, bought, you, I bought my scooter there first. And yeah, then, I bought, <laughs> weed, then I bought weed there afterwards. <laughs> well, you know, at the Belltown one, I have a big painting on the outside. Right. Of yeah. myself, but if you come to the uh, Soto, you'll see there's a big painting of the inside. But this time, I put like guys of Jim, Jimi Hendrix in there, Bruce okay. Lee, guys from nice. around the, the city of his, uh, Seattle with uh, some history. So I uh, put Gary Payton, guy, different pictures of other than just myself. Now, who, whose idea was it to put up the mural of you? I mean, was that you? Like, yes. paint my ass. <laughs> yes, <exactly. up> <laughs> no, it was not. I'm just joking. <laughs> I couldn't be that smart. Well, it was the guys that guys that I work with. Uh, they thought of they thought. 
would be a great idea. And then collectively, once we, 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 we started talking about it, we all agreed that it would be a great idea. Is it weird, mm-hmm. though? I'm sure you're used to it now, right? Mm-hmm. But, like, the first time you roll up, like, mm-hmm. there's a big-ass painting of me on the outside of a building. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I mean, the, the truth of it is, you, you, you know, they can put that painting of you on that building. But then even later, you'll come back and you'll say, that is a big-ass painting. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Well, is, it, is it weird now? Because, I mean, you, you, you got busted for having weed at one point in time. Right, that's weird. So is, is it strange to walk through that door and go, man, oh, man, because you had, like, everybody else, we're yeah. the same age, you had to hide that stuff oh, man, forever. Absolutely, absolutely. And, um, I mean, it, Unless you're in Portland, maybe. But I mean, what, <laughs> what the, the thing about that is this, is that I didn't I didn't want to come out and just be like, oh, there you go, now I can sell weed. But, of course, inside I was saying, hey, now I can sell weed legally. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, I mean, yeah, in right. your lifetime, yeah. would you ever thought for one minute that you would have been... Well, I had a buddy of mine, when I first moved to Seattle, there's a buddy of mine, uh, his name was John Gostein, man, and he used to tell me, he, he would tell me that weed is going to be legal around here one day. And I would say no, and he would always argue with me that it's going to be legal around here one day. And then uh, it, it really grew on me, and then I was just like, is this really going to come true? And, uh, you know, I, I was actually living in Houston when the weed was legalized uh, here in Seattle, and then I moved back and started checking on the laws and what I could do to pertain to get me a store to get into the business. And it took a few years to uh, team up with the right people, but I think I did a good job but teaming up with the right people. Now it's just about getting identified in the community, letting people know we have two stores, not just one, right. and I think things will be great. And you're selling Sean uh, uh, Payton's cookies? Or, yeah, uh, Gary, I'm selling Gary Payton's cookies. I'm, def- I'm definitely selling uh, Derry, uh, Gary no, Payton's cookies. Have you been aware of Gary Payton's cookies, say, long before everyone else was aware of Gary I was aware of Gary Payton's cookies. I was uh, trying the Gary Payton's cookies out <laughs> yeah. before it was out. Uh, Do you remember that, the SUV that we you see around town, like 2005, it had the Superman logo in the front? Yeah. Was that his car? That was his car. I, I, I knew it. I was like, who else would customize a Superman logo in the no front doubt. of their SUV? I'm like, that's got to be Gary Payne. <laughs> no doubt about it, man. He's a car guy, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, right, and then you used to, then you used to own part of a bar down in Belgium? Yeah, that was Lower my Queen. bar. Yeah, it was uh, Queen Anne, uh, Oscar's Kitchen. Yeah. What, yeah. What, what, what haven't you done in the city? <laughs> like, now you're promoting festivals? <laughs> I know, no, man. Yeah. That's what, and I think that's what it's about. I mean, the, 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 the best thing about not uh, being able to play ball in being identified in this city is one thing, but to be able to become friends with people around the city and be able to promote these things and be a part of certain things is another thing, and that's what puts a smile on my face. Yeah, Houston, I mean, right, right. I was to say, like, we're all transplants. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we've been here, what, 18 years? 18 years. Uh, but I'm with, I mean, it's great. It's great having friends here, and then the Northwest is awesome. Well, it you, is. you brought up Houston. That's Willie Nelson's uh, hometown. And, uh, of course, uh, have you ever smoked with, like, Willie or Snoop or any of those guys? Absolutely, both of those guys. Have you really? Yes, <laughs> now, what is that? Who, who did is you take a stronger picture? smoker? <laughs> After, you know, I, obviously Snoop. <laughs> <laughs> well, who has the stronger weed? Um, uh, well, you know, doubt about it. Because he has his own weight or his yes, own uh, strain has, of weed and everything else. Yes, uh, he has a, what's what, the what, Willie, uh, uh, Willie's Reserve. Willie's Reserve. 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 Yeah. What, what's the difference? I mean, uh, Willie's, uh, 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 Reserves is a more dense weed. Okay. So it's a strong, it's a very, very strong indica. And with Snoop, Snoop actually has a, a professional roller. You don't know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, he, 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 that guy's like, <laughs> that guy makes $100,000 a year. There you go, man. So he has someone rolling him up on the side. You just smoke it. Well, his pup, his pup, pup, <laughs> pass tour. My, my kid went Snoop to it. Snoop does the microwave trick, too. Every blunt goes in the microwave oh, yeah. for a couple all seconds. Right, why is that now? I what is that? A, hang on. I went through a phase where all I smoked were blunts. And I was always about the microwave. Like, yeah. let technology help. What does Instead the microwave of, do? Is you got to lick it to seal it instead Correct. of using your lighter and take it forever to seal it. Just 10 seconds in the microwave. And it kind really? of fluffs it, it up and fills it out. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's not just for popcorn anymore, kids. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> Miles, I've done it at your house. You came upstairs. Oh, yeah, you were yeah, like, yeah. what's burning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, until she opened up the microwave and she goes, really? <laughs> <laughs> is it crazy to realize you're smoking with Snoop Dogg? No, it's awesome, man. Uh, he just had a concert here last week, and he was wearing my jersey on stage, man. I love the guy to death. One thing about Snoop, well, one thing about Snoop that people really need to know, as, as good as a rapper that he is, he's really that smart of a person. And that's why you see him doing so many th- different things business wise. The guy, he really, he really gets it business wise. So I, I enjoy sitting down talking to him about business. Yeah. Who, who do you think is more commercial, Snoop or Shaq? Because Shaq Definitely apparently was telling you. I'll show you uh, car insurance. Yeah, I'll show you printer ink. Everything. Shaq, Icy hot. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing that Shaquille O'Neal can't do, trust <laughs> me. Yeah. The guy's everywhere. I mean, he gets it. Um, you know, uh, 
and not just a good basketball player, but he was like, yeah, I remember he's a platinum rapper. God, that's right. He's he just dropped a, a really good song like two days ago. Yeah. Right, is it honestly good? Yeah, yeah. it is. Okay. Yeah. And he was Kazam. He was in Blue Chip. Yeah, yeah I mean, Kazam is his, his claim to movie. fame. Yeah. You know what I mean? Blue Chip. Isn't that Sinbad? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he played him. Hey, he and that's his, you got to remember, that's his chicken place down there climbing pledge. That's right. Yeah. yeah. It's big that's, chicken. That's his chicken. Mm -hmm. That's his chicken. Can you hang out for a little bit longer? Absolutely. I can. All right. We'll be back more with uh, Sean Kemp right after these. el desempeño de tu vehículo y ahorra gasolina con O'Reilly Auto Parts y Lucas. Llévate dos botellas de tratamiento para combustible Lucas por solo 10 dólares. Además, obtén puntos dobles o rewards con esta oferta. Detalles en la tienda. Realiza tus compras en tu tienda O'Reilly Auto Parts más cercana o visita O'ReillyAuto.com oh, 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 Supersonics legend uh, Sean Kemp with us in studio. The Cantana Festival, August 26th in Renton, Tech 9. And uh, local guy, uh, Swisher Sleep, will also be on the bill. Uh, tickets on sale, cantanafest.com. Uh, Sean, who would you say, and, I, and I'm sure that you are, uh, you're probably in the know that the uh, hopefully the Supersonics will be back here in a couple of years, right? Yeah, I think so. I think um, we're closer to getting them than uh, them being away. And I'm maybe sure. Vegas, but uh, it seems like Seattle. Is I think Seattle and Vegas is at the top of the list right now for both teams. Who's the hardest guy that you ever had to play up uh, against? You know, I, I could name a lot of guys out there who was tough for me to play against, but there's one guy that I always would give respect to. That's Carl Malone. Um, you know, he kind of, you know, playing against Carl really taught me a lot, man. Uh, he's a big, strong guy who. Uh, who likes to throw elbows, and he was a very good player. And, you know, he had a, had another good friend beside him, John Stockton, and I think myself and Gary Payton both learned a lot from both of those he, guys. He was the mailman, you were the rain man. It was, Except for man. he had an 18-wheeler and drove, you know, uh, a yeah, cowboy but, hat on. Yeah, you know, he would actually drive that 18-wheeler before the game sometimes and try to intimidate us. But I, used, <laughs> I, I used to laugh at that stuff, though. <laughs> All right, I got one for you. I'm sure you've been asked this before. Are you still in contact? Did you ever talk like uh, Lister? Yeah, absolutely. Lister Blister. Yeah, I'm going to tell you this story. Lister <laughs> called I mean, me. That he just called so me. Famous. He called. He he got a hold of me about a year about a year ago. He was actually a year and a half ago. He was over in the Philippines, right. and he said that every time he walked down the street, people was doing the point to him. <laughs> so he was like, oh, he, he, he was like, oh, I, it never goes away. Like, I went all the way over here to the Philippines, and I still can't get rid of you. <laughs> <laughs> just, I mean, there's been a lot of ducks in the NBA. That one is just so <laughs> tough. Absolutely. Uh, you ever, have you ever flown coach on an airline? I have, man. It was like an emergency. <laughs> and then I I tell you what, I got a I got this theory about coach, man. When you fly coach, I sit the exit row, but then I stand up the whole flight. You have to. I have to. Literally stand up the whole flight. No, I mean you're you're six ten. I mean right. And I've um but normally I fly first class, but sometimes First class is taken, and people are not giving up those first classes. No, 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 no. I don't blame them. So I'll go back and I'll sit in the coach. I just stand up the whole flight. What's the worst uh, shot you've taken to the head? Just not being able to see something and running into something. No doubt, Bill Lambert hit me <laughs> <laughs> when I first came into the NBA. I didn't. I still had a little of the high schoolish in me. Yeah. So you know how guys will start pointing at you from one bench, and then I, you know in high school you point back at him. You like, hey, yeah, you shut up. Right. So the Pistons were pointing at me. So I started pointing back at him. One of the guys on my team said, hey, do that point back. Those, those are, that's the bad boys. I was like, so what? I'm pointing back at him. Like, I wouldn't do that. Well, I woke up in the hospital. Oh, oh damn. Man. Oh, damn. Was, he, was he a nice guy off the court? <laughs> you know, and, uh, but, you know, I'll be honest with you. He's a hell of a basketball player. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah no one can argue that one. No. Uh, someone has a good question here. Just as far as weed goes, so you have your two locations, right? right. Soto and Belltown. Do you sell any of your products out of store? No, I don't. Okay. No, I don't. I don't put my name on any products currently. Okay. All right. I, um, you know, that's, you know, it's like anything else in business. You want to take your time before you jump into something. I don't want to put my name on products and then have all these other companies using my likeliness. So until I can have a blueprint on exactly what I'm going to do business-wise when it comes to products, I won't do it. Are you more busy now that you're not playing basketball Absolutely. than when you were? Absolutely, because 
Now, uh, it's not just about myself. It's about the workers who work for me. So you, you, you not only have to worry about in basketball, you just kind of, you know, you have to worry about yourself. Of course, your teammates, you're accountable for your teammates also. Uh, and I think that's what's helping me out in business a little bit is that I was able to work with guys on the court and keep a good team together. And now in business, it's kind of the same thing. But no, I, um, I generally enjoy working with people and that's your responsibility to, uh, to handle your business for that team. Are people kind of shocked? when they walk in your store and there you are. Yeah, absolutely. They smile. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and, so, and I, you know, the funny, the good thing about doing this is this, is that just here in the last two days, I've had a person from Greece, Australia, two days ago come see me. And today already I've had a person from Florida, Tennessee, and New York come see me. Well, the All-Star Weekend, it had to be huge. Yeah, so the All-Star Week was absolutely huge. <laughs> but generally, every week goes by, we get people from around the country who just travel here just to come out and see the weed stores, which is very cool. Especially with that, the cruise industry and everything else. And that'd yeah. be cool, man. You think about it like this. I've been to McDonald's 10,000 times in my life. Never met Ronald goddamn McDonald. <laughs> now, you know what I mean? So, like, when you go to a place named after That's something, right. you don't expect them to be. If you, like you said, if you go to Climate Pledge and go to Shaq's Chicken, you do not expect Shaquille O'Neal to be there. Right. So people probably have that same mentality. They walk into your weed shop and they're like, I will be damned. I yeah, don't, I don't know. It's, 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 cool that, it's cool that you guys say that because absolutely, that's the element of surprise that I try to bring to the business and spend so much time there. So generally, I'm at, if I'm not at one location, I'm at the other location. I switch them around every other day. And just to stay identified with the people to let them know that I'm doing this hands-on. Right on, oh, man. Yep, yep. I went there to pick him up earlier today and I didn't know if it's a normal thing, but he was there there at his store and there were people waiting on him to show up and, and as soon as he pulls up he's like oh how many of y'all he goes and grabs a bunch of jerseys and he gave out jerseys to all the kids and signed them all in his parking lot and I was like I was, ama I was amazed by it what about adult my yeah, kids what the hell is my <laughs> no, listen man I watch my kids get hooked up with everything. We go, hey, come here, son. And I'm like, bro, this is your first game. You know what I mean? I spent the money to be here. I bought your popcorn, your cotton candy, your goddamn dip and dots and a Sprite I told you not to tell your mother about. And you got a freebie? Damn, I got to go to the yeah, team yeah, store, yeah. brother. I'm dropping 90 bucks. Well, speaking of that, all your kids are grown up now, right? Absolutely. That's That's got to be a relief. Man, absolutely. <laughs> grown up, got through college. I mean, you, no more Father's Day jokes for you. No, crap. No, no man. No, you know what? And they're, 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 they're all smarter than me. They graduated from college, and you can't. Did you pay for that? Yes. Jesus. <laughs> I mean, I just, I, I don't even want to tell you what I just paid. Everybody was just like, I mean, man, I mean, could he just, just bow to me? <laughs> <laughs> hey, those payments was well worth it, man. Absolutely. Yeah, they were all out of state, probably, too. I'm all big into my kids. I, actually, are... most of them went to school at UW and Washington State. Really? See, that's those, pricey, man. I got two kids, and all I can think is either get a scholarship on academics, which seems unlikely, uh, get it on sports, which is on, or just be dumb enough where we all agree, like, <laughs> it's just not worth the money. That's all. I'm just trying to save money, man. But you're not a grandparent yet. No, right? no, no. Okay, not all right. Yet, man. Just, um, yeah, just a, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a tough thing. I, I, I pity with the families out there putting their kids through college, especially <laughs> if you have more than two or three. Well, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's some definitely work that goes behind this. At least your two sons maybe got a scholarship? Yeah, yeah. My, okay. my son was able to get a scholarship to UW, but my... My um, you know, my daughters also went to college, and uh, you got to be there, and they got to be treated well the whole time through too. What's but, it like being a kid, uh, and your dad is Sean Kemp? Well, I, I well, I think it, like I said before, the thing about it is this: is that you these days you want to be cool, but you have to be dad, right? right. And then um, so uh, you, you got to lay down the rules, and that's just the way it is. And I think uh, with well, myself, my parents always told me to have a good foundation, man. So that's what I try to push out on my kids. You have a strong foundation and then things are, can only be better from there. Now, do you think it works? Because I try to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, are they even listening? I, I I mean, you, don't, my wife you really is. don't know until they get out of the house. Until they're like 30. Yeah, yeah, you to gotta, my wife. They have to get out of the house and still then you have to give them a little time. Sure. But, um, you know, as long as they're your kids, you got to support them. And that's the thing about it. It doesn't matter if they mess up. It doesn't matter if they do well. You still got to be there for them. Well, you got to, your daughter, I mean, she introduces you to her boyfriend or whatever. I mean, what's the look on this? <laughs> oh, man, you, try, you want to scare the hell out of this guy. You know what I mean? He's literally, he's literally like, he's trying to shake your hand, and you're like, really? <laughs> really, you want to shake my hand right now? I will crush your hand. But, <laughs> yeah, I mean, now that you have to say anything, you just look down at him. That's right. No, but no, it's... You treat them fairly, and I think um, they they come back and treat you fairly. Also, was there uh, was there one moment in your NBA career that you always remember that was just something special to you, or just it, maybe it was off the wall or whatever, but you'll never forget it. 
Yeah, I, I, I do, man. Just, um, just has been telling you, just being a kid, walking into that locker room, seeing these big, huge guys um, uh, was a very intimidating. You know, very intimidating. And uh, it came back to this, this, this thing that this coach told me a long time ago. And, it, and I used to, and I asked this coach one time, there was, I was trying out for a team when I was a kid, and there was 350 kids in the gym. And I was like, how do you become number one? And this coach told me, he goes, well, you don't have to fight everybody at one time. You just got to fight them at one at a time. Yeah, that's okay. true. He goes, take your time and go through them one at a time. So that's what I kind of did when I got here, man. It was intimidating to see a lot of these older guys in the locker room. But when I was able to um, realize that I could use my brain and my smarts, my speed and my quickness when I was young to my advantage, that's what I've done. But yeah, you drafted at 89 or whatever it was. Did you ever think you'd spend the rest of your life in Seattle? I mean, for the most part, for the most part of your life. I did. I did. I, well, I knew I would spend a lot of time here because um, once I got traded from Seattle, I went to Cleveland, mm. and then I, I, I knew that I wanted to come back to see how <laughs> <laughs> He's not kidding, man. That's not even a swipe. I was like, look, I can't get back to the starting, so I'm going to get traded to the Portland Trail. Yeah, exactly. But I got to get back close to well, Seattle for the, sure. Right, have you got the Emerald City or the <laughs> Mistake by the Lake? Right. Well, right. Kevin, <laughs> Kevin Clabro, who went down there and did uh, the, uh, the call for uh, the Trailblazers after he, uh, the Sonics were done, he, he gave you the nickname, the Rain Man. Yes, right? he did, man. Kevin, uh, he came up, actually... You know, we they were trying to name me the reindeer, and I was like, no way, that's not going on. <laughs> it's it's not going on. And then he was like the rain man, and then I was like, you know, and I was like, man, it rains so much around here. I'm going to be the rain man every day around here, but I don't know. And then they was like, no, not rain like R-A-I-N, like rain like thunder, like, you know, the old school, like the gladiators, the old school rain. And I was like, hey, I don't know, man, but. You know, I went to sleep that night. I woke up at 3 in the morning, and I was calling these guys at the radio station. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, we're going to take the rain, man. man. Yeah. So uh, immediately, I think in the next week, we put my name on some water bottles, talking rain. Things just popped off really fast. Did the movie mess it up for you? The Costco right. brothers put me on the posters. It just it really <laughs> took off from that point. Yeah, it used to be the Iceman, George Gervin. Right. Yeah. right. Um, then, uh, you know, well, at first, uh, okay, so it was like the Iceman. And I was like, well... I'm Dr. K. And it was like, there's already a Dr. J. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. K sounds like a drug reward. Thank you. I was like, I've been to Burning Man. I've met Dr. K. <laughs> John Kemp and, uh, and Scott McKinley, thank you guys so much. The uh, Cantana, Fest is, Cantana Fest. Uh, Cantana Fest is August 26th. Cantana Fest is August 26th in Renton. Uh, Tech Nine will be there. Our sister station, Hot 103.7, is putting that on. Tickets are on sale now at CantanaFest.com. Thank you guys so much for stopping. Please buy tickets and we appreciate everybody for uh, listening to us. Child Ace coming up. You are listening to the men's room. 99.9 KISW. The shenanigans continue. This is the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Big thanks to Sean Kemp stopping by. Very cool yeah. guy. Man. He's a funny dude. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so coming up, men's we'll drink and toast with a shout of the day. We do have your headlines on the way at 550, but first, a quick check in with Mike Hawk and some of the stories and headlines he is not working on. All right, a new poll found the age that you're more, uh, you're most likely to change careers, 31. I was going to guess 30 to 32. All right. That makes sense. Right. Kind of that, that mid-moment between what you wanted to do and, okay, what can we actually do now? Well, the 20s have ended. Right. Everyone, are, when are you going to get your act together? When are you going to get away? I probably should. Probably right about now. Well, oh, there's still time. 28% of Americans think most people who eat gluten-free do it for attention. I don't know about that. I mean, maybe they do, but that has not crossed my mind. Oh, I've thought about it. Because you see stuff, there's a lot of people. Because the, the percentage of people that actually have celiac, celiac right, right, is so low compared to the number of people that are eating gluten-free. Right, so I think some of the people that actually have that disease were like, "Can you can you ease up?" Right, but like I'm gonna die if I have it, and right. I would you know. <laughs> and you can see who they are if they're overly braggadocious about it. Like, okay, yeah. If you're bragging about having a disease, yes, it's probably for attention. <laughs> right. If you hate that you have it, <laughs> <laughs> right. If you lower, I it got silly ass bitch. What about you? You're just fighting through it. Thirty-one percent <laughs> of Americans will go on a vacation this year. What exactly is a paycation? It's a good question. What a paycation is is when you basically you you work from home somewhere else on vacation. Well, you know, I mean, so so not a vacation, exactly. Not a vacation. It's a working vacation. You just go somewhere else. So, I'll be honest with you, though, man. Like, if we worked from home, yeah, like I cannot do this job from home. I need to be in the studio. It makes sense to me to do it here. But Correct. if we did this from home, there's a chance you're talking to me in Jamaica. 
there's a chance that you're... So, like, if I already worked from home, as a matter of fact... Sure. Count on the fact that I'm a lot of other places than home. Well, and working from home also t- took away the requirement of, you know, you have to be here from 9 to 5. Like, right. well, I get my stuff done in two hours, so... Is this saying people that work from home might not be at home? Correct. That's basically Or, or right. is it saying, so, like, you're on vacation, but you still got to work? Kind of. So, you're going to take a vacation to, to Vegas... You're going to put in a few hours worth of work there while you're there on vacation, and then the rest of the time you're on vacation. So, yeah. So in the day-to-day, like in the in the the meat of the day, you're probably going to be doing some work unless you've got something else that you're scheduled sure. and doing. But that's kind of, you know, it's it's balancing the work-vacation balance as opposed to work I mean, like I said, if I, if I worked from home as a rule, which is like, say, our sales department, right. I'm not here. You know, like, right? I fathom that. Yeah. I'm just I'm just one of those sticklers. Like I, I have had people call me and I'm just like, I am on vacation. Right. Oh no vacation. You know it's I mean? like no 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 no. Yeah. That's, that's what a vacation is. I, mean, that's guys. Yeah. I think a lot of people in this country do to take actual vacations. Yes. Don't check work email. Don't don't worry about it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. A woman in Canada just set a world record for her collection of toothbrushes. <laughs> All right. Are they used? Right. I don't know. She's got sixteen hundred and eighteen of them. Then I hope they're used. Because my th- if you're just buying toothbrushes for the sake of saying you have a collection, that's one thing. If you say, hey, all of these have been used, I go, okay. okay. What, if, what if she has gum disease or something messed up? Like that would be that. hilarious, isn't it? A man in the UK shared a picture of his Airbnb, and it's not what I'd call cozy, Miles. Why is that? Tell you all about it at 5.50. Thank you, sir. Headlines are coming up at uh, 5.50. In the meantime, it's going to contest on the line for Profile This. At 206-803-ROCK. Imagine a world where health means more than going to the doctor's office. It's why we created a health insurance company that considers so much more. WellPoint. Your whole health is our whole point. Have you been in an accident that wasn't your fault? Feeling overwhelmed and unsure what to do next? Look no further. The personal injury attorneys at Phillips Law Firm are here to help. Phillips Law Firm understands that accidents can turn your life upside down. That's why they're dedicated to fighting for the compensation you deserve and to making the process as stress-free as possible. Don't wait any longer. Call now, 1-800-JUSTICE, or visit justiceforyou.com. Hey, it's Mike Hawk. Join me every Thursday at 1 p.m. exclusively on the Odyssey app as we go live with Odyssey. Join in on the action as we cover interesting facts, top 10 lists, and some fun new games. Follow the Men's Room page on the Odyssey app and join in all the fun Thursday afternoons at 1. Guard of Minutes, drinking time. Somebody out there deserves to be recognized. And the Men's Room knows just who it is. So to you, we say... Bottoms up, sailor! You're the toast of our shot of the day. Drink time it is, and as usual, we head to the drink desk and Steve a throw hell to find out who we're toasting. Yes, indeed. First, a big shout out to our boy Sean Kemp for coming by, man. Yep. Yep. Good job. Funny dude. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. But uh, today, we toast an unnamed police dog at Lafayette, in Lafayette, Indiana. Now, yesterday, the K-9 unit and his partner, that would be Officer Ryan Shack, they were serving an arrest warrant on a robbery suspect. Well, they found their suspect at a gas station, and that's where their confrontation began. But after a brief struggle, the officer himself able to subdue the suspect. But that didn't stop our canine hero because he sprang into action and bit into his calf muscle, actually sent him to the hospital. But we're toasting the dog because he bit the police partner. Not the actual criminal, oh, who's completely man. healthy. And they took his ass to jail. They were tussling on the ground. <laughs> Dog said, I would get in there. And the thing is, the cop had actually subdued him at this point. The dog came out, tore up his calf. Yeah. Right. Good time. He's so close. Mm-hmm. So close. So we pour this booze, and we drink this booze, because we think it's yummy. Yummy! yummy. So over the tongue and down the throat to party in our tummies. Down the hola, bitch hola. The Men's Room presents Profile This. That's Steve Throw Hill. Could you please tell everyone how Profile This is played? I sure can, Miles. It's a simple game where we share with you a real-life news story. Something that happened right here on planet Earth. Earth, 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 Earth. And as you listen to the story, based on the stereotypes you believe to be true of people and the decisions that people make, we'll ask you what it is you think makes the story a story. Hello, Justin. Welcome to the men's room. Hola. Hola. All right, Justin, you understand how this year game is played? I do. Fantastic. You have your choice of one of three stories. Today we have 
Oh, boy. What the hell do we have? We have drugs. <laughs> we have bite me. In other words, what did someone find in their food? And finally, we have interior decorating, where you guess the foreign objects that ended up on the inside of someone. Give me them drugs. All right, Justin, here's your story. We go to Crestview, Florida, where a man there was caught with his pants down. But the sheriff's office said deputies found drugs in his butt. The Okaloosa County Sheriff's Office reported that a multi-agency drug task force in the panhandle executed a narcotic search warrant at this guy's home in Crestview. That's where authorities met Timothy Holt. They said the 49-year-old had more than a kilogram of crystal meth on him. But then they said they brought to light that he had more drugs on him. Authorities said uh, Holt told them he had about three and a half grams of another drug concealed in his blubber hands. Well, he was charged only with trafficking methamphetamine, and his bond was set at 60000 So for whatever reason, they didn't even charge him for the other drugs, but he still had them inside his butt. So the question is, what drug was he hiding up in the poop keg? Was it crack, weed, heroin, or cocaine? Hmm. And you, you said they found what on him? They initially they- found methamphetamine. That's the only charge they put against him. And he said, look, I got more drugs up my butt, man. He wasn't lying. They got a few more grams of a drug, a different drug, but they didn't even give him a charge for it, which I don't know why. Justin, I'm going to get crazy here. Weed is not really legal in Florida. That is correct. Uh, They do have medical marijuana, but it's crap. For some reason, I just think that you would get more in trouble with weed in Florida than a lot of other drugs, and I don't know why that is. So for whatever reason, it seems so stupid that I'm going to go weed. But they didn't charge him for that, for the second drug. They did not charge him for the second drug, correct. Which, again, I don't know why. I mean, they had, what, more than a kilo of crystal meth. I guess that was a good enough charge. What uh, what do you think, Ted? It seems pretty speedy. So I'm going to say he had some crack up there. Crack. Crack in the crack. All right, Justin, what are you thinking? Uh, I think you said it was three and a half grams. Yeah, let me double check. I believe that is correct. Three and a half grams, yes. I think he had an eight ball of coke up there. All right. What did this guy? Uh, oh, my man knows his hey, measurements. Say, you know, yeah, yeah. What did this guy conceal in his <laughs> balloon knot? Was it crack, weed, heroin, or cocaine? We'll find out next. That was a tease. Imagine a world where health means more than going to the doctor's office. It's why we created a health insurance company that considers so much more. Wellpoint, your whole health is our whole point. KISW. We return to the men's room with Miles and Thrill. Categories Drugs on Profile This. We go to Florida where a Florida man was caught with drugs in his possession. And he admitted that they were his. Then he also told the uh, authorities that he also had more on him. Yeah. Or in him. Yeah, it is a rusty sheriff's badge there. So, question is what was stuffed? Crack, weed, heroin, or cocaine? And Justin, that is the question we pose to you. Let us start with E. Ted Smith. Mm. E. Ted Smith, you said crack in the crack. Crack in the crack? It was not crack in the crack. Miles, you went weed? I did. Understanding how Florida operates. Yeah. No, mm. it's not weed. And Justin, not just cocaine, but three and a half ounces, you said, ha ha, an eight ball of cocaine. Nope. No. Heroin. Heroin? Yep, and heroin upside. Huh. Seems weird they drop a heroin charge. That's what I thought, man. Because, again, the only charge was for the meth. But they didn't even hit him with the heroin charge. I guess they're like, the meth's enough. You had over it's a kilo. kind of sad. Like, you hear about drugs and how much people on heroin need heroin. That mm-hmm. dude's like, oh, I got to sneak this one in. Yeah. That, they you take my meth, but I want Damn. my heroin. Now, for all TV news all the time, it's time for TV Time with Tia. And now. Because your pathetic life is confined to countless hours in front of a talking box. The Men's Room presents TV Time with Ted. So here's kind of a strange one is that this week the Emmy nominations came out. But also, you still have the writers on strike. Mm -hmm. Today, the Screen Actors Guild, the SAG, went on strike. So basically... If you, unless you're, you know, a grip or something, like all the actors are on strike and all the writers are on strike. So, like the Emmys, like right now, they're not going to happen. Yeah, I mean, there's that's exactly it. All right, so I kind of like that. Like, yeah, sure. Like, because uh, they're saying like they usually air in September, but with it, they're probably not going to happen. So they're saying November or maybe next January. Next January, huh? All right, I mean, I get it. You don't have the writers, and and now the actors are on strike as well. 
Well, that's why I don't know if anybody watched a little bit of the ESPYs. I didn't watch it. I watched some of the highlights. But that's why Pat McAfee came out and did the opening monologue. Because Kevin Hart was supposed to, but Kevin right. Hart was like, I'm not doing it without my writers. Correct. And to McAfee's credit, he wrote his monologue. Yeah, I mean, that's it. Like, yeah. writers are on strike, so let me do my thing. Yeah, and McAfee was pretty damn funny. And you know what? Look, eventually it gets resolved, because Hollywood's not trying to lose its money. But the Disney CEO, uh, was it Bob Iger? Iger? Yeah, he said that everyone's demands are unrealistic. Quick side note, he's worth $690 million and makes $27 million a year. And just signed an extension today. I know. He's, right. to he say said that people are out, He said they are out of touch. I mean, I, I just... I, I, there's I, a lot of examples of, of CEOs or politicians or people truly being out of touch. But to have the gall to right. make that quote... When you get paid twenty seven million, million dollars you're the head a of, year, you're the head of Disney. You just resigned a deal and said, "Oh, these writers are out of touch." Because they're they're asking for twenty seven million a pop. Well, That's I saw for sure. I saw an actor put out today, not a big name actor, you would know, but they were just like, "Hey, you know, twenty years ago, here's what the starting base pay was for like a SAG, you know, actor." Yeah, and it's basically the same. Right after twenty years, like nothing, no inflation, nothing, and it, and it might have been more than twenty years. You know. They're, 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 they're in the same boat as most people that have a job, right? Cost of living and inflation far outpaces what you make, right? right. Which is inherently one of the big economic problems in this country is that, right? It, you might not get much of a raise, but inflation still goes. I mean, look at the housing prices in Seattle, right? I mean, they exploded for like 10 years and, and you get priced out. But most of the things that these people are asking for, the revenue stream is already there. You're not asking to create a new revenue stream to pay them, which is difficult for a company. This is with all the streaming services, etc. The money's there. You're just hoarding it. We're asking for a cut of it. I'll tell you what, and people, I mean, like, it's going to be rough because, I mean, I, there's UPS is getting close to going on strike. That is correct. And, like, when I worked at the AFL, like, you could not send anything except for UPS because they're a union shop. Mm -hmm. I think they're mostly Teamsters. Right. So, yeah. It'll be interesting, but I, I don't know. Because it's going to be hard for the average person not to watch TV. Well, yeah. I mean, it's got so a lot of sports, man. A lot of sports. But you can watch sports. Cause sport, you know what I mean? Sports is the one production where you just have cameraman talent. Correct. I, you know, I should say that. As I'm sure Sports Center. I don't know if those anchors write there. I'm sure somebody helps write those scripts. I, don't, I think a lot of them do write their stuff just because it is, they're the ones speaking it, so to speak. So, like, yeah. most of your news anchors, they how you hear what they said is what they wrote. Right. Well, the, yeah. All, yeah. Also, last time the writers went on strike, there weren't all these streaming services. So, right. at least from the customer perspective, even though this is ongoing, as a television viewer, there's a lot of shows you haven't seen. There's a lot of things out there. But it's still just TV, though. So, right? You get a 15 yeah. streaming yeah. service. Yeah. Go, right. Yeah. But it's on my TV. Right. All right. So we get to HBO. By the way, they led the Emmy nominations with as they Eight do every year. They had 127. God. Mm. How many awards do they actually give out at the Emmys? Oi. Man, a lot, I, a lot. I, I did I not count I, them all. I started, there's, there's I started, a, no, I mean, it's a lot, a but they have that many yeah. nominations. Although I want well, to say a few of them, they're like like three actors from one show are all best are up for best actor. Right, so they had 127 nominations. 70, 74 of them came from just three shows. Jeez. Six, succession, which had more nominations than any show with 27. The Last of Us with 24. And then The White Lotus with 23. Hmm, I gotta be honest with you, I haven't watched any of these shows. I, I watched The Last of Us. Pretty, I can see why they get a few Emmy nods here and there. Uh, Succession, I've not watched, but I've heard only good things. Succession, I know Succession is such a big show because when you look at social media, old, young, man, women, white, black, whatever they are, it seems like everybody loved that show. Right. And was like, holy cow, the end of it was crazy. Hmm. I, the way it was sold to me, I just didn't like it. But I should go back and watch it. I know it's one of those. If everyone thinks it's good, it's probably good. Say what though? If there's nothing new, maybe I'll finally watch Game of Thrones. I can think <laughs> that's probably how it's going to go. Maybe right? you finally watch Little All American. There you go. Great show, Ted. I know you're going to come in and be like, dude, I'm really gripped to this one. I'm like, I told you it was a good show. Uh, let's see some of the best drama shows. You have Andor, Better Call Saul, which Andor I, was great. All right, I haven't watched Andor. I'm a I'm a Better Call Saul fan. Not nearly as fast paced as uh, Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad, but like, and Mike, you kind of gave up on Better Call Saul, correct? I did. Yeah, I got into like the third season, and I was watching it as it was coming out. So there, I, my docket got filled up with a bunch of other things that it just it, it wasn't high enough. And better. I, Better Call Saul to go to right because we I've been talking about superheroes all day. Better Call Saul is more of a uh, origin story, if you will. Yes. Gotcha. 
Oh, I see what you did there. Wow. Well, dude, I was up all night coming up with those questions. I know. Sure. I, know sure. I know. Nobody even asked me who my favorite superhero is. Who's your favorite superhero, Ted? Luke Cage. Luke. There you go. Of course. <laughs> A.K.A. Power Man. A.K.A. I think I'm the only person that actually watched that show. You are correct. <laughs> no, I watched it. Oh, did you? Yeah. That's yeah. the show. It was. And I love that he just wore a Carhartt hoodie the whole time. Hell yeah, Do you realize that's how Nicolas Cage picked his name? Oh, because of that comic? So, he's a Coppola. But he said, man, when you get into Hollywood, if your last name's Coppola, either you're treated like royalty or you're treated like dirt. Right? Like, oh, right. look at you. So, But he's young in his career, so basically he says, like, I'm going to change my name. And people had a bunch of different things, but he's a comic book guy. I knew that. Right. So he ended up going and he said, I, I picked Nicolas Cage because there was a guy named Luke Cage. And he said, it sounded kind of punk rock. Sounds kind of badass. That's exactly why. What yeah. Badass. <laughs> like I mean, like, look, we were asking Trim, and I liked Luke Cage. I can't remember if that was on HBO or Netflix. I think it was a Netflix, Netflix. one. Yeah. And actually, that series had a lot of actors I really like. Mm -hmm. I just, you know what I mean? I just, I don't know other, I was like, oh, man, they're all in there. But that's also like Switzerland, right? Always being kind of neutral. neutral. Yeah. So like that, when you asked that question a couple of weeks ago, I was like, oh, during World War II, I was like, well, it's Switzerland. Only because the guy that ran the barber shop was like, remember, this is like Switzerland. Like there's no ah, okay. no fighting or nothing in here. Uh, some of the other best drama series are The Crown, House of Dragon. Yeah. I have not watched that yet. Damn it, man. I know I need to. I can't believe that dragon can afford a house. No, no. I know. either. He's so big. I mean, the doors have to be huge. <laughs> he must be in Oklahoma. It's a story of him trying to sell. It's like house hunters, but for dragons. Why is the front door so big? <laughs> I'm a dragon. <laughs> and then Thrill, a show I know you got into, Yellow Jackets. Yeah, all right. So that got nominated well, as yeah. well. Uh, some of the best comedy nominees. All right, let's just see who's watched what. Abbott Elementary. No. Yes. Nope. Oh, nice. Very funny show. Barry. Yes. I've watched yes. Barry. Mm -hmm. ba Barry's pretty good. Uh, the Bear. My wife watches it. No. Is that right. a comedy? It is. Well, it's dominated yeah. in the comedy series. I, I mean, look, I've seen maybe 10 minutes of it total. <laughs> My wife watches it. She watches it religiously. She loves it. But at least the parts I've seen, like you might chuckle at something. It does not come off as a comedy to me at all. All right. All right. Uh, jury Duty? Nope. I've never even heard of that. I have any. I've, oh, you know what? My buddy has been to me to watch that one, and I haven't watched it yet. Is it the streaming? Yes, and I believe that, right, it's just about these people on a jury duty, and somebody's kind of faking it, and they're an actor, but it's an actual real actor. Okay. Uh, it's supposed to be good. I can't believe Barry's in the comedy. Just the, the episodes that I've watched yeah. of that show seem to be a little bit darker than comedy. It, but it, it has a, funny moments, yeah, but it's so weird that that's... They're almost cringeworthy. Dark right. comedies are really, really hitting right now. Because you think of like the BoJack Horsemans of, of, of the day that are coming out as well, where there is just as much seriously depressing material <laughs> in and around these comedies. Like, oh, yeah, we're all sad. Right. <laughs> well, I mean, look, Ted Lasso's in there. Ted Lasso, obviously a comedy. But after that first few episodes, <laughs> right? like, it's still funny. It's a very it, good oh. show. Right. But it definitely gets more into a drama and kind of tugs on your heartstrings. Mm -hmm. uh, Ted Lasso also got nominated. Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Heard of it. Heard of it. Never watched it. Only My mother-in-law watches it. All right. Only Murderers in the Building. That's the Steve Martin, Martin Short, Selena Gomez show. I believe so. I have not watched it, but I've heard good things about it. And then Wednesday. Yeah, I, I did not think I'd like My daughter was going on and on and on and on and on about it. I'm like, babe, yeah, I hear you. Just enjoy your show. That's one of those days she gets me in a moment of weakness. Will you watch an episode with me? This point, I'm like, fine. That's pretty much my response. It was great. <laughs> Ended up binging through the whole thing. But it was a good show, babe. Good pickup. Uh, also kind of cool, uh, Weird Al. <laughs> oh, yeah. The weird, that Weird Al Occupant story, like, that got nominated for some Emmys. Uh, Daniel Ratcliffe got nominated for accidentally lead actor in a limited series or movie. Uh, Weird Al himself got one, so, like, it, that's his first one. That's awesome. That's so cool, though. Think how long this guy's been doing whatever it is he does. And it's like, dude, you're up for an Emmy. He's still selling out shows, too. I, I know. Well, and I think it's always cool to see people in different genres get those awards. Like, look, when it when it comes to the Grammys... Whoever the last president was or an ex-president is going to win, like, spoken word thing, audio. Right. right. It's, it's, I don't they know. put out a book. Right. Because it's, it's important. It seems like every year it's an ex-president that wins that one. But, like, I'll never forget seeing 3-6 Mafia win that Oscar. And it was just it was kind huge. Of, right. And it was just wild to be like, holy crap. You know, I mean, right. they're, like, look, I think 3-6 Mafia is a massive rap group. But I don't know that they're as well-known 
You know what I mean? They're not in that dra- world. Right. They're not right. They're not Drake. Well, didn't like, like Kendrick Lamar win a Pulitzer or something? I believe so. Right. And again, it's Kendrick Lamar. He recognized in the music world and he put out whatever book he put out, whatever it was. But it's like, dude, you won a Pulitzer. It's not that you put out a book, but like it was good enough that you won like the top award for it. Good on you, man. Yeah. So for like Weird Al, that's dope to kind of see him mm-hmm. winning a, winning a, not a Grammy, an Emmy. Yeah. And the only thing we've received, okay. only award this show, this is not a joke. It was, so we've been there for 18 years. We got it 17 years ago and it was for. Most improved show. Most improved, <laughs> meaning you are really bad, right. and now you're, you're not as bad. You're not as bad as you used to be. Thanks. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. It's like getting a report card that says, well, Billy still struggles a lot in math, but he stopped eating glue. That's I mean, basically I, what that is. When I grew up, you had those on sports teams. But my, yeah, like the MVP like of the different. team, and then they were supposed to improve on the team. I mean, it's a little better because you're like, all right, I did get better this year. I got good this year. Well, here's the thing. We didn't know they had awards. I think that's why we were so blindsided by it. Like, you give out awards? Like, yes, you're most improved. I did watch last night. I recommend it. Uh, quarterback on yeah. Netflix. I mean, look, I'm a football nerd, so it's getting to be that time of year. So I'm getting kind of excited to watch it. We call this uh, foreplay. Basically. So it follows around Kurt Cousins, Patrick Mahomes, and uh, Marcus Mariota. Uh Patrick Mahomes, once you see this, like if you didn't already respect how good he is and like him, you want him to be your quarterback. I think most people would say and, that. Yeah. And just this, I know, but like I like the intensity he has, like on the field and stuff, and then because it takes a behind the scenes, you're going to see like their families, what they're doing, this and that. It makes Kirk Cousins a lot more likable, but it also Kirk Cousins. Like I was telling you guys in the office, he's exactly who you think he is. Him and his wife and their family, they just seem like a. Not to be mean, but kind of like Oakley Doakley couple yeah. you meet at church. Right, like and the Flanders come, family. Right, and they come over for a cookout. Like, super nice, and he's just, it was just wild. I was like, man, he is not, like, playing around at all. Marcus Mariota, he's, I just know what's going to happen is this is all last year. Okay. Which, credit to Netflix, you timed this out perfect for the football junkies like me. Right? It's, it's like, camp hasn't started, there's no hard knocks, and it's like, oh! Oh, we got this show about these three quarterbacks. Again, it's it's the girl at the bar to flash her boob real quick. There's yeah. a promise of something better. You want more, but meanwhile, look at my boob. Yeah. Now, with that said, I'm going to lie to you. As a Seahawks fan, I was sitting there, and I was like, oh, we didn't even know they were filming this. And I'm like, maybe they're already filming Gino. <laughs> That's right. That would be an interesting story to watch, though, man. Right? For real, most, after most last improved. season. Yeah, most, most improved. Because well, what he did last year, like this year, and I have confidence in him now, but like this year is... It, it, oh, I think yeah. that's going to be a huge. I mean, look, and I was just Gino. It's going to be interesting to see what that team does, but especially yes. for Gino. Yeah. He comes out there in a second year and just starts dropping dimes again. It's going to be like, how many backups in this league did we not start? A yes. lot. Yep. That could be starting. Uh, if you're a fan of the Blacklist, I highly recommend you watch it tonight because it's the series final. Thank you, Ted. We appreciate it. You're listening to The Men's Room. The Men's Room returns with Miles and Thrill. Now, let's see what's happening in the real world. All right, here we go. Seattle drug dealer was doing well for himself until he passed out in his car. Meanwhile, a man gets an Airbnb in England and learns how to not live like a rock star. Las Vegas man busted driving drunk with firearms and fireworks in his trunk. Iowa man lying in the middle of an intersection of a highway. Yeah, definitely drunk. An investigation is launched after thieves steal... The runway lights at an airport. It is time for your headlines. Now, it's time to hit the head. Lines. Here's my car. All right, on top, we go to the UK where a professor from Berkeley is off on vacation. He booked himself an Airbnb in the area, but was already a little wary about the accommodations after he found no reviews for the dwelling, which should be really a red flag to anybody Mm -hmm. to some capacity. At least do a little bit of follow-up before you book it, but it is what it is. Upon his arrival, his suspicions were confirmed as he went down to the bathroom of the building to find that it was indeed a personal bathroom. He did get it all to himself with his bed put inside of it. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. He posted a photo up on uh, social media, complained to the company about the accommodations, but they're not giving him much in the way of support. They did say that, you know, it didn't quite meet their standards of what the Airbnb needs to be. However, we encourage all of our customers <laughs> to look at all the pictures and reviews and ask questions about the accommodations before booking. Or don't don't have them on your site. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, you can do a little quality control on your end. Right, and... I wouldn't be shocked if this does lead to that particular quality you control. Would also. You know, sometimes somebody's got to step in the mud before it can get cleaned up. There you go. 
I don't know if you guys caught this uh, caught this photo, but it it looks like a hotel room bathroom. I mean, it, it's a nice bathroom, but then they just shoved a mattress in there. And that's the Airbnb. That's the Airbnb. Come on, man. Yeah, I I'll tell you what. I mean, I I don't know. I don't. There's a lot of things people do. Like other people start doing it, other people do it. Like Airbnb was so cool, everybody was doing it. Now it's, I feel like it's flipping the other way. Like I have a lot of friends. Like right. I'm just staying in hotels anymore. Mm-hmm. Like it's right. not. It's, and then you got to worry about cameras. Then they got so many rules. Right. Yeah, I prefer a hotel over an Airbnb. Yeah. I know the rules of the hotel, and the truth is, I'm only going to use my room to sleep. Exactly. Like, under Airbnb, I just feel like I'd be more inclined to be lazy. And that's really the only saving grace when it comes to this accommodation is that I'm in London. I don't plan to do anything other than really pass out and. To be honest with you, I'm probably going to drink enough to where I'm mm-hmm. grateful for the bathroom being, you know, the toilet oh, being very right next so. to my yeah. dog. And the fact bed. you can roll downstairs, get a cup of coffee, maybe a small breakfast if you want in the lobby real quick. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to do any of that crap either. Right. I so. mean, and right, even like somebody like me, like I like hotel rooms, but it's not that hard. Like they usually have a little chair or couch. Yep. Right. Like I did when I was down in Portland. I was home in my room every night by like 9 30 or 10. It's like, great. Yeah. All right. It's great. Oh, it was ice cold. Yeah. 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 You hit that up. AC and just chill that bad boy and down. And you sleep like a dream. The other thing dude. I love doing is leaving on every light and TV. But somebody goes, to I'm like, don't turn them off. Turn we off. We, we're not paying the electricity bill. Right. <laughs> I feel bad that I am racking up the electricity bill, but also I do like coming home to have something on TV. Yeah. Whether it's a sitcom, whether it's a sport, whether it's something, I like having something on the TV when I walk in. I don't know why. It makes me feel not alone, I guess, but I enjoy it. <laughs> in other news. You're not alone, Mike. Thank you, man. Over in Iowa, police got calls <laughs> from concerned citizens after they found a man lying in the middle of the highway intersection. Police arrived on the scene and found the man passed out and snoring. After waking him up, he uh, he revealed that he was coming from a wedding reception about five miles away at a local golf resort. Uh, he was arrested for his public intoxication and has already been through the court system and has been ordered to pay fines to the city. Five uh, miles. Five miles. I mean, when, I, right, like, you shouldn't have made that decision. But it's like, but you were drunk enough to do it, which is why you were sleeping in intersection. Right. That's what I'm saying, right? Like, damn. How long do you think... He walked, because there was no car inside. It's not like he stumbled out of his car and then laid right. down. He walked that five miles. Oh, yeah. So, it, you know, first off, it's like, how much further did you have to go, and how long did you get before you went, this is probably a bad idea? Probably about two miles in. <laughs> but then you're like, well, if I turn around, how does he walk? Right. I mean, I could walk five miles, no problem, but the last time I did, it took, it took a little bit out of you to go five miles. Uh, last time I did, I probably was drunk. And I almost made it home. I would say I was two blocks away from home and I had to call my wife. <laughs> I can't. Uh, she was like, where are you? I gave her the intersection. She's like, dude, that's two blocks away. So I'm like, I am holding a stop sign. <laughs> I'm holding a <laughs> stop sign. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's it for headlines with that. Mike Hawkins on. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. We'll see you next time for the weekend. Friday is on the way, man. Ted versus Yay! the FCC and a bad choice Friday. The lovely Taryn Daly's up next. Yes, indeed. It's all true. But in the meantime, well, we be all about this bitch for 180 seconds or so. So until then, please do what you do best of our lethal sake. Stay beautiful. Before a live studio audience, wardrobe and Makeup provided by Mantastic Limited. This has been a presentation of the Men's Room Radio Network. Oh, man! A double flush production.